Thomas Paine. Thomas Paine. Thomas Paine. Sam Adams. Sam Adams. Sam Adams. Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin. These men spoke up for what they thought was right. From their courage came such documents as the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. United States. From their willingness to speak what was sometimes unpopular but right, we enjoy such liberties as freedom of speech, the right to keep and bear arms, and freedom of religion. There are those who still wish to oppress our freedoms, and there are still patriots willing to stand up and defend life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Men like Zeb Bell, who honor our founding fathers and what they stood for. It's now time for Zeb at the ranch, speaking up and defending your freedoms. Brought to you by Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers and all of the other great advertisers on the program. And now, Zeb Bell. Our 16th president, Abraham Lincoln, said this. We the people are the rightful masters of both Congress and the courts. Not to overthrow the Constitution, but to overthrow the men who pervert the Constitution. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Here comes Kate Smith, and God bless America. On a Wednesday, May 23rd, morning, morning, need a patriot. And a good, good morning to you, Zeb at the Ranch. I'm Zeb Bell, of course, with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you. And, of course, get ready for a road trip. Bye-bye. Go to see Aunt Martha and Uncle Fred. They've got all the great tires for you at your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers, along with some of our great advertisers, including Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue Suite 2 in Burley, Helping you get back to being you. Right now, let's go to the phone line and have our Pledge of Allegiance with a Patriot. Good morning. Well, good morning, sir. Hey, you've made it. <laughs> I, I dig. All right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. And right now, let's go to the weather forecast brought to everybody by K&R Rental. Hello, Roger and the crew over there at 256 South, 600 West of Hayburn. Right there, smack dab on the Burley Paul Highway. You can't miss them. And they've got the rental of the best tools and equipment. And believe me, they've got short-term, long-term rentals on that equipment. They've got all your power rakes, rototillers, everything. Post hole diggers, you can get a PhD, like I said yesterday, without going to college. Hey, all you have to do is go to K&R Rental at Burley Paul Highway, location 6783122. Right now, here's the weather. Here's your weather forecast as we hit midweek stride. And for the morning hours, we're going to see some sunshine. But as we move through the day and into the afternoon, maybe some storms. Here's your weather forecast for Zebit the Ranch. Partly sunny skies as we begin the day. But as we move through the afternoon, some storms are going to be rolling in that could produce small hail, gusty winds, and heavy rain. Mostly cloudy skies by this afternoon as well with a high of 71. That could continue for tonight with a low of 51. Tomorrow, 20% chance of showers and thunderstorms in the afternoon. Mostly sunny skies. We are expecting a high close to 80. For tomorrow night, 20% chance of showers and thunderstorms with a low of 52. For Friday, sunny, about mid-80s, 83 is what we're expecting. And then for Saturday, 20% chance of showers and thunderstorms, mostly sunny skies, and a high of 76. That's your weather forecast for Zebra 3. Thank you, Gina. And brought to you by K&R Rental. And these are really good folks that have all the equipment and the tools helping you. Give them a call, 678-3122, 256 South, 600 West of Hayburn, K&R Rental. We've got a lot of interesting things to talk about this morning. And one story that I heard at about 4.10 this morning the first time, and it has been covered extensively since 4.10 this morning. And it's about a 30-year-old worthless guy. And I'm just going to say it like I feel. He's a 30-year-old worthless guy that refuses to leave his parents' home. 
We're going to talk about that in just a minute. I want your input on this. Hey, don't forget Ramsey Heating and Electric at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. And the number to call, 678-0459. They have all your heating, cooling, and electrical needs. That's not brag. That's a fact. They've been in business almost 60 years, and they've got the top-notch people serving you. Absolutely. Open 730 to 5 Monday through Friday. Again, call them if you need to. Stop in, please. 678 Zero four five nine twenty six hundred Overland Avenue in Burley Ramsey Heating and Electric, where they provide warm winters and cool summers. Also, want to remind you too. Uh, I have had a lot of calls. People saying, "Well, how come we didn't have lunch bunch this month?" For those that did not hear, my wife was a little bit under the weather, and we had to put her in the hospital and have tests taken, and we're going to reschedule Lunch Bunch as soon as I can. I promise. At Denny's Restaurant, 611 North Overland and Burley, and also another location at 291 Pole Line Road in Twin Falls. A Denny's Restaurant, of course, you know, America's Diner. I urge you to stop in breakfast, lunch, dinner, anytime, all the time. These people are so cordial, so nice, and they serve some fantastic food. At Denny's Restaurant, 611 North Overland in Burley, you stop in and see them today. 30-year-old guy, 30-year-old man. Now, let's give a little case history about this guy. I did not hear if he was ever married, but he did have a child, okay, and he refuses to leave his parents home he said no mom and dad i'm not leaving they asked him they being the parents they asked him to leave five times and he said no so finally the parents had to sue to get this creep out of their home well it goes to court And the judge, I believe it was yesterday, said, get out and grow up. Well, that's not good enough for this 30-year-old lazy creep. He said, "Mm, no, I don't think so. I think I'll leave in about six months. And the judge said, no, now, now. So then this guy files an appeal, and he's demanding that he live off his parents for at least another six months or longer on this appeal. He's had a child, and his latest so-called job at Best Buy, listen to this, he ended up suing Best Buy because they fired him because he, this 30-year-old lazy creep, would not take and work on his Saturday shift. So... Like a lot of stupid liberals, he turns around and says, I'm going to file suit against Best Buy, and he's suing them for three hundred grand because he wouldn't show up for work. What are your thoughts about this? I, I feel sorry for the parents. They look like um, people that are easily cowed and easily pushed into a corner. But here is a 30-year-old guy that looks like a messed up piece of rug and uh they've told him to leave asked him to leave five times what are your thoughts about this would you let your kids stay in the house and just absolutely disrupt your lives caller i'm going to take your call right after i do this quick commercial please bear with me i want to hear your remarks this upset me man i tell you what i'd figure i'd lock the doors change the locks sit there with a shotgun and say hey buddy Hit the road. Don't forget Pomerel Place, a place for senior living. Absolutely. A lot of seniors live at home for as long as possible, and they really are suspect to having, uh, you know, safety hazards and poor nutrition, mismedication. Well, please check on Pomerel Place, a place for senior living that offers the ability for seniors to maintain their independence both safely and comfortably. I urge you to call them, 677-8212. That number again, 677-8212, Palmerell Place in Burley at 1301 Bennett Street. Please get a hold of them today. Also, real quick, Dino Septic Service. I've got a lot of respect for these folks. They do the job that you and I don't want to do. Mm Mm-mm. 
uh, septic tanks pumped, uh, septic tanks and drain fields installed, water and sewer lines installed, liquid waste removal, sewer and sink drain lines cleaned. No, you don't want to do that. But they do it, and they do it with a smile on their face, fast, fair, friendly service. Absolutely great folks at Dino Septic Service. You call them, 436-6526 or 678-1638. And the big truck smells cargo on the way. Dino Septic Service. Caller, good morning. Thank you for your patience. Good morning, my friend. Yes, my friend. Okay. Is this what you call tough love? Tough love would have been getting somebody to come over and throw this uh, absolutely lazy lout out of the house. I don't care if they would have had to call the sheriff's department. I don't care if they would have had to call maybe some uh, neighbors or whatever that are former NFL players. But get this lazy lout out of the house. This guy would lose in a contest between him and uh, what was that? guy that killed all them, that Sharon Tate and everybody. Oh, Charlie Manson? Well, I don't know if you can put him in that category. You know, he would, Charles Manson would come in second place when it comes to looking scroungy. Well, I'll tell you what, did you... He's absolutely a vagrant. Well, he's a vagrant, he's a, he's a no-account, he absolutely is despicable for his child to look up to him. He lost custody of the kid, that's obvious. And uh, now he's going to sue Best Buy for 300000 because they fired him because he would not work his Saturday shift. I mean, this guy is, under the caption, worthless. He is... Got to be a Democrat. Well, now wait a minute, Keith. Wait a minute, Keith. Don't make speculation on my program. I don't like that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but he acts like, okay, let's put it this way. He acts like something that wants everything for nothing. Uh huh. And just to have it handed to you. Uh huh. Sound like, sound like anybody you know? It does, but we don't speculate on this program. We only provide the facts. You know, on top of this, his parents offered him $1,100 to get a place to, <laughs> to go. You you know, know. I like it here, he said. You know, this is so insane, and I feel sorry for the parents, but then also I have some animus against the parents for not being tough enough, tough enough to throw this lout out on the street. Well, we... We all get frustrated with our children sometime when they're growing up, but we always think there'll be a brighter day and they will shine. Well, I'll tell you what, both of my kids, both of my kids I'm so proud of. I mean, man, we never had to, I, I beg them to come and see us more often. Anyway, I got another call waiting, Keith. God bless you for breaking the ice this morning. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. Thank you. you. Caller number two, you're on the air. Go ahead, please. Yes, sir. I don't feel sorry for the parents. They created this mess. I agree. I agree. Did you see the mom and the dad? They kind of reminded me of that uh, gothic painting of the husband and the wife holding the pitchfork. Yep. Doesn't that remind you of them? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. If they'd uh, taught this kid value and responsibility when he was two, three, four, five on up, then he would be okay. But they coddled him. They babied him. They probably... If he had a problem at school, both of them went and fought his battles at school and yeah. fought all of his battles for him, and then now it's time for him to be a responsible adult. He doesn't know how. He can't be because he's, A, not smart enough, and, B, he was never trained in that way. Exactly. He wasn't trained. I mean, you take a dog, you take a horse, you take any animal, and for them to be a good animal, one that you can trust and one you can use like a horse net, you got to train them. It, it, but, you can't just grab them, let them sit in the pasture for two years, go jump on them and expect them to do everything that, you know, you want them to do. Doug, it goes so much deeper, uh, and this isn't just a one-time Charlie story. You know that. I know families right here in the Valley where their kids, underline the word kids and put it in parentheses, are 35 and 40 years old, still living at home and leeching. Exactly. I know some of myself. And it's it's a sad deal, but I put it on the backs of the parents for not 
teaching the kid the proper ways and the proper things. How would you like to get up in the morning and go down into the kitchen and put on a pot of coffee and there sits this lazy 30-year-old lout and he basically is taking up residence even though you've asked him five times to leave. You filed suit against him. The judge has told him to get out and he's sitting there going, Morning, Dad. What are we going to do today? I couldn't stand that. I couldn't either. There, there's one way. He shouldn't have taken it to court. That's that's the worst thing they could have done. Why not? The court should have said, this is a frivolous deal. It's a family matter. You deal with it. In some respects, I agree with you, but on the other side of the coin, I disagree with you. And I'll tell you why I disagree. I think by the judge telling this guy to get out and grow up, the humiliation hopefully will set in and sink in. And then also an edict that we're going to force you to get out on the street and be self-responsible. Maybe it did come to that. Well, you give the kid a lot of credit. Uh, I don't give him any credit. Humiliation being something that he can understand. You know what I would do? You know, honestly, what I would do if I were their parents, I would buy a loaf of bread, and I would buy a six-pack of water, and I would say, here, your first meal on your own is on us. Get the hell out of my home. Right. Yep. What I Personally, what I would do, if something like that happened to me, I would which I wouldn't let it happen, but first off, when he d- would go out somewhere or go do something, when he come home, all of his stuff would be in the front lawn, the locks would be changed, Yes. and like you said, put a six-pack of water and a loaf of bread and say, you can live on this until you learn how to support yourself. I, I just was amazed when I saw this story, first of all at 410 this morning on the national news, and then it made notoriety with people writing in and sending Twitter responses, etc. And I just can't imagine a family uh, with a 30-year-old deadbeat that won't leave the house. I mean, I just can't picture this. No. Well, we, we were raised different. Yeah. We were raised to be responsible and like you said your German father and my German father, you know. Actually, my, my my German dad gave me every opportunity to leave at 16. <laughs> I know. I couldn't wait to get out of the house. No, the, let's just say that the door opened and he had his hand on the knob. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got to run, buddy. Give us your 15-second deal. Okay. Yeah, but let's do what we can for our seniors. And remember, I got raffle tickets for a raffle at the Minidoka County Senior Center. Uh, They're three for five bucks. Come on down. Thank you. All right, buddy. Thank you. Doug always appreciates you. Thank you much. Coles are welcome. What about you? Come on, fess up. What would you do if you had a kid, now an adult, that absolutely said no, no, mom and dad, uh, I'm not going to leave. I'm going to stay here. Uh, I don't have a job, and uh, it's a lot easier to live off your nickel, so I'm going to stay here. Oh, yeah, mom and dad, I had a job at Best Buy, but they fired me because I wouldn't work the Saturday shift, uh, so I'll sue them for 300000 What would you do with it? I hate to say kid, but a child like that. Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation, 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley. They can help you with all your aches and pains and recouping from surgery or an accident, whatever. Oh, yeah. Nick Greenwell, head of all the physical therapists there, and they are fantastic. They really help me. I know they can really help you. All you need to do is make an appointment. And they've got that hydrotherapy pool. Oh, that is so good for you. Don't forget, too, that uh, the number to call, 678-1191. Helping you get back to being you at Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation, 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley. Oh, and two, don't forget Sophie's Chatterbox. Every Monday on this program, we give away a dozen cookies, and uh, you answer the trivia question, you can win Sophie's Chatterbox. Great restaurant, fantabulous bakery. Oh, yeah, 530 East Street in Rupert, right on the square. You stop over and see them today. 
All right, calls are welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Has anybody out there heard or maybe even had that problem? A 30-year-old guy that absolutely doesn't want to do anything and you have to sue him but in the courts to get him out of your house. I kind of agree with Doug's philosophy on this, that uh, some way, somehow, you tell him, oh, Mom and I are going to leave for the weekend, and you fake and phony it, and then you wait till you see him drive away, and you got the locksmith all set, you've got everything all ready, you've got a couple of people to help you to throw all of his stuff out on the lawn or out on the street and have the locks changed and just sit in the house and say, sorry, Maynard, you're not coming back in this house ever. I think that's what needs to be done. Your thoughts, give us a call, 436 227 Another story that absolutely is, uh, I'm just really incensed about this one. I, I don't even know how to report this story. You know, President Trump took a lot of heat regarding his uh, verbiage on calling MS-13 animals. Well, they are. They are absolute killers. And they kill in the most grotesque ways. I hope he doesn't weaken on his verbiage. He is going to be on Long Island today in Nassau County. And he is going to be talking about, with the police on Long Island, what they need to do to cut back on, arrest, and throw out of the country the MS-13 gang members. Now, I read some stats on this that were absolutely shocking. 40% of the murders in that area... And if you've ever been back there, a highly concentrated area of people, Long Island, New York, uh, Long Island, basically kind of the upper crust a little bit. But 40% of the murders have been done or committed by MS-13 gang members. Horrendous killings. And Nancy Pelosi, (laughs) this woman just absolutely infuriates me every day. She came out and said, oh, well, they're not animals. They're all a part of God's children. No. MS-13, they are animals. After I had written a few notes about this this morning, and Donald Trump going to be talking to Nassau County Police this morning on how to curb or quell this problem, I picked up the newspaper and I read one of the most horrific stories in the local newspaper that happened in Reno, Nevada. And it sickened me so much and broke my heart. A couple, a man and his wife, never called 911 when their five-year-old daughter was dying inside of a filthy, absolutely filthy Reno apartment earlier this month, May 11th. And then listen to this. And you think some human beings are not animals? The husband and the wife put the girl in a duffel bag after she had died. And they drove over to Sacramento, California, rented a storage container, and put her body and in there and locked it up. There is no punishment. There is no... I can't think of anything that we could do to punish these people for being animals. Animals. Police said the apartment was absolutely disgusting. Police said that she had been handcuffed in the bathroom and there was old, rotten, stale food on the floor. And her body was so emaciated 
they couldn't believe she was as old as she was. And they stuffed her body in a duffel bag and put it in a California storage unit. Now, to Nancy Pelosi and all you bleeding heart liberals out there, don't you dare call this program. Don't ever call this program and say that human beings like this are not animals. Calls welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. I hope nobody has the wherewithal to call and accuse me that I'm wrong. Barry Equipment and Rental, don't forget sales, service, and parts. 159 West Highway 30 in Burley with Juan, 465 Addison Avenue West in Twin Falls with Eli and the Nampa location. And they do have all the Walker lawnmowers for you to mow up a storm. I mean, you'll probably leave your lawn, go to the neighbors, and head on down the road and mow more. I'm telling you, these are great lawnmowers. And they got all the Bobcat excavators, too. New and used excavators for sale or rent, all shapes and sizes. Boy, and if you don't know how to drive one, don't worry about it. They'll teach you in the sandbox right out behind the building. Equipment rentals, retail equipment sales, Barry Equipment and Rental, Burley, Twin Falls, and Nampa serving you. What are your thoughts? Please, 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 I'm, I'm asking you to call and give me your remarks about uh, these stories. Uh, absolutely ridiculous. And to read this about this uh, Reno husband and wife, it's just unbelievable. And there is no punishment that could be harsh enough to that so-called man and so-called woman. Give us a call, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. And while I'm waiting for your phone call, don't forget our friend Scott Gano, landscaping and tree trimming. Oh, my goodness sakes, they are busy this time of the year. And you know they're so busy, I can't find their copy right now. I had it right in my hand. And uh, all you need to do is just give them a call and talk to them, and they can help you absolutely. Now's the time to get all those fruit trees trimmed. And maybe you've had some wind damage with your trees or whatever. Well, take care of them. Give them a call. Scott Gano Landscaping and Tree Trimming, 336 South, 450 West of Hayburn, 431-8733. You get a hold of them today. Scott Gano Landscaping and Tree Trimming. Give them a call right now today. Also, oh, we got a caller coming in. Good morning. Good morning. Um, after listening to what you had to say about that couple, how how can you be so sick? You give a birth to a child, which is part you, you know, and then you do such a horrible thing. I wonder what kind of a childhood these two people had. I don't know, but Chris, when I read stories about that kind of thing and uh, the absolute uh, animalistic attitude of these so-called parents handcuffing and chaining this little five-year-old and and throwing uh, stale and uh, rancid food on the floor for her to eat and she died in such an emaciated state and then cramming the body into a duffel bag driving 130 miles to Sacramento and stuffing it in a storage container you tell me what kind of punishment they deserve. Uh, about the same kind of treatment that they gave their little daughter. I agree with that. I agree. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. I don't think that if I were the judge, I probably would have the case appealed and I would probably get thrown off the bench because I agree with you totally. They should suffer the same fate as that poor little girl that was in their care, their daughter, in their custody, and look what they did. And for somebody to criticize me for calling them animals, animals is not strong enough. Actually, animals are pretty good to their offspring. Yes. It's this human animal that does the horrible things. This story sickened me, and uh, it should everyone. And do you realize, do you realize this part of the story that I haven't mentioned yet? 
they, these absolutely uh, animal parents, have two other children. Oh. Yeah. What do we know about the other children? It doesn't say anything. It just said that they lived in Reno in an apartment along with two other children. And here's the words they said in the sentence, that they share. Right now, those kids should be absolutely in foster homes, and this man and woman should be thrown in jail cells, and then the food should be rancid and thrown on the floor, along with warm, stale water. That's what they should exist on. Yeah, actually, that's really what the court ought to order, because they need to eat their own... They, they did this to this child. They need to be treated the way... They, they treated her. Yeah, I just... <laughs> I'm I, telling you, that's so sad. Anyway, thanks. And well, Chris, thank you for calling in. You're always appreciated. Thank you very, very much. Appreciate it. God bless. Bye. You know, uh, to hear stories like this, and they happen, unfortunately, almost every day in this country, but I'm pretty soft-hearted when it comes to kids and uh, wear my emotions on my sleeve, and nor do I care. If if somebody doesn't like when I said that, that's fine. Uh, but there is no punishment, really, that I can think of that would be severe enough. What are they going to do? Are they going to lock them up in a prison? They're going to get their three squares per day. And then probably on their sentencing, they'll probably have a window of opportunity at the end of that sentencing to get back on the street. Why? Why? They're worthless human beings. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Mr. Bell. You know, both of your stories this morning are just um, appalling. As far as the MS-13 group goes, um, they're less than animals as far as I'm concerned. We need to just line them up and take them out. And I'm not a violent person, and I'm not advocating violence. But, you know, stand up to these, stand up to these little pukes. And let them know that, you know, we're not going to tolerate this anymore. Enough is enough. Do you know how they killed one of their victims on Long Island, New York? Caller number two, stay on the phone. I'll be with you in a minute. I'll tell you. They drove nails through a baseball bat. Through a baseball bat. And they had the victim held by other MS-13 gang members. And then each of the other gang members took the baseball bat and they swung and hit the victim until finally there was no facial uh, expressions on the face anymore. It had been completely wiped off. 27 skull fractures. And then they cut the body up and left it laying in the street. Now you tell me they're not animals. I dare somebody to tell me they're not animals. No, no I, I totally agree. I'm just saying that, you know, even animals... Even even your most vicious animals are not that uh, um, uh, uh, mean. Um, I, I don't know. I, I just think there's there's plenty of things we can do to get rid of these little pukes. Um, and I know you got another call. And, and the the second story was uh, the little five year old girl. Yes. Um, there are no words to describe how that broke my heart. Um, how how do you do that to a little child? You know she had to go through hunger pains, and she was screaming and crying. What is wrong with these people today? Well, all I can say is, I don't know. You don't know. Nobody knows. But there has to be a punishment so severe that it's going to make other animalistic people think twice about doing such an absolutely horrid act. You're, you're you're totally right. They they need to be tarred and feathered. I'm sorry. I, I I can't even fathom. You know, I'm a mother and a and a grandmother and and a great grandmother. Um, I, I can't. It's beyond my realm of thought how people can do that to a child. I don't know, Donna. Um, you know, there's there's plenty of people out there in the world that can't have children that would give their eye teeth to have a child. If you don't want a child, number one, don't have one. If you have one and don't want it, give it to somebody who will give it a loving, nurturing home. You know, Donna, I've got another call, but I want to say this to you, and I want your response. Quick response. You know what would be a job that I could not perform at all in circumstances like this? I could never, ever be a defense attorney. Oh, heck no. No. 
I, I don't even think I'd make a good police officer and have to go in and, and find situations like they have to find. Oh, my goodness. Um, I'd go ballistic. Thank you, Donna. Always appreciate hearing from you. Thank you so much. You bet. You have All a right. great day, my friend. Take care. Thank you. Caller, I'll be right there, I promise. Please have patience with me. Don't forget, Redder's Showcase is going to have a big Memorial Day sale. It starts today, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and a special sale day on Monday, Memorial Day from 10 to 4. Holy cow, they've got all the Maytag, Whirlpool, Amana, KitchenAid, Speed Queen. <gasps> they've got them on special prices. You better get in there, along with their mattress gallery with Serta and Tempur-Pedic and all the other brands. Oh, my, six months same as cash on approved credit. You better stop in today. Redder Showcase, 2611 Overland in Burley. Big sale. Stop in. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning again. You stole my thunder right there at the end. The public defender. Oh, my gosh. What a job to have to do. I couldn't. Because you're... You are, I assume they are sworn to uphold the law and to do their very best to prove the innocence of these people. And how do you do that? Well, not only prove the innocence, but in this case where it's beyond a shadow of a doubt, try to lessen the degree of punishment to them. And I would say, if I was that defense attorney, judge... I can't represent them. Please, I'm I'm out of here. I'm not going to do it. I will not lower my standards of being a caring human to try to get these people on a lesser charge. As far as I'm concerned, they're dirt bags and should be treated as such. Yeah, and that that's a terrible position to be put in, and it is your job. They could be even prosecuted. For not defending this. Case. Yeah, uh, there's just no defense for this, Keith. There is no defense for I this. I realize that, but they still. Are obligated to do I know, that I know. Of their position. I know, and, but to sit. I, my heart goes out to attorneys that always try to do the right thing, and I, I have attorney friends that I think the world of, and. It's just a shame that they have to defend these people. It's uh, This is not even defensible to me, and it sickens me to have to report on these stories. But I appreciate your remarks. Thank you, Keith. God bless you and Nancy. Have a great day. Thank you. Okay. All right, Thank buddy. You. Thank Bye. you. Now I'm uh, I get a little emotional about this, like Donna too, and uh, to think that they had her shackled to a box. They found a wire animal crate in the bathroom with handcuffs attached to it. And next to the crate was what appeared to be a girl's backpack with a hat inside the backpack with a little girl's name, Callie. And the Democrats, like Nancy Pelosi, want to defend MS-13 and others. Oh, don't call them animals. They're worse than that. Time for the weather brought to you by Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. And, of course, they're located right behind the Minidoka Hospital, across from the emergency room. The number to call for your hearing health evaluations, 312-0957. Two of the very best doctors, Dr. Pickup and Dr. Mitchell, pride themselves on caring for each individual, and they can and they will help you. Please get a hold of them today, Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids, 312-0957. Right now, here's Gina with the weather. Here's your weather forecast as we hit midweek stride. And for the morning hours, we're going to see some sunshine. But as we move through the day and into the afternoon, maybe some storms. Here's your weather forecast for Zebit the Ranch. Partly sunny skies as we begin the day. But as we move through the afternoon, some storms are going to be rolling in that could produce small hail, gusty winds, and heavy rain. Mostly cloudy skies by this afternoon as well with the high of 71. That could continue for tonight with a low of 51. Tomorrow, 20% chance of showers and thunderstorms in the afternoon. Mostly sunny skies. We are expecting a high close to 80. For tomorrow night, 20% chance of showers and thunderstorms with a low of 52. For Friday, sunny 
about mid-80s, 83 is what we're expecting. And then for Saturday, 20% chance of showers and thunderstorms, mostly sunny skies, and a high of 76. That's your weather forecast. Who's up at the ranch? And Gina, thank you for all you do with the weather and all your help. And thank you very much to Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. Oh, my, they do a great job. You can trust your hearing health to Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. Call for an appointment, 312-0957. Calls are welcome, 436-22-441-866-927-4587. By the way, too, Irvana is defined as the ultimate level of comfort you'll achieve with the presence of a new Lennox home comfort system. When you buy a new Lennox system at Ramsey Heating and Electric, you can get up to $1,700 in rebates. Irvana, of course, just another way to make you feel better. So call Ramsey Heating and Electric today at 678-0459 or go to their website ramseysonline.com another story that is upsetting to me because it shows a lack of class and it shows a lack of leadership and it shows a lack of respect for our country our military and those that have served and lost their lives for this country and it goes back to the nfl I read a story yesterday, and then I heard a report on the news last night. The NFL said it is searching, remember that word, searching, for a policy to cope with the kneeling and or sitting during the national anthem by its overpaid, underworked players. That's my part of it, not theirs. And I thought about this last night, and I told Deanne that if I were Jerry Jones with the Dallas Cowboys or anyone else of ownership in the NFL, I would fire their worthless hides if they even looked like they were going to show disrespect to our flag and our national anthem. This is not a hard project or problem to solve. Roger Goodell is a worthless, absolutely worthless coward, drawing in millions of uh, dollars a year on his contract, but is unable to answer and solve problems that are deteriorating and hurting the NFL. I think they need to have a clause in every contract. They are private contractors. They are private workers signing a contract with their employer, the owner of that team. The same as when you go to work for somebody, you play by their rules. It's simple. Whether you're a plumber, an electrician, or whatever you do for a living, you play by the boss's rules. Or you get your butt thrown out the door or you're fired. It's no different in the NFL. You want to play for me? You play by my rules. One of my rules is a clause in the contract. You stand for the national anthem or you're out of here. Nobody is irreplaceable. You're out. You're gone. Go find another team. It's not a hard problem. It's not that hard, but Roger Goodell is either too dumb or too liberal to simplify and solve the problem. You do it my way as the owner, or you get the heck out of Dodge City. What is so hard about that? Oh, but today we've got to have the players, and they have to have their association, and they have to say, well, you were too harsh on this guy and that guy. Baloney, you get the money, you play my rules, or you clean your locker out and leave. Caller, good morning, you're on the air. Yeah, the, this uh, you're exactly right on that. The thing is, I know 99%, well, maybe 95% of those guys that come in and enter into the NFL already have kind of a holier-than-thou attitude about themselves, prima donnas, most of them, and they seem to think, well, wait, the NFL, you wouldn't exist and you wouldn't be successful if it wasn't for us. So we feel like we got you over the barrel on that one. So they're going 
they do just like they do. They they do whatever they please. And Roger Goodell, with the kind of uh, leadership that he's shown, and a lot of these owners are just letting it go. I mean, they're just too afraid of the cash cow getting uh, hurt. You know, there was a movie, I don't know if you ever saw it, it was called The Replacements. And it was a movie about uh, pro football going on strike, and all the football owners hired replacement players to play in the big NFL. And you know, the premise of that story is that there was more effort, there was more try, there was more heart in the replacement players than there were for the prima donnas that you stated playing in the NFL. The gist of that I would like to see happen again today, to the point where we say, okay, you don't want to play by my rules you're out of here and don't let the doorknob hit you in the posterior on the way out you know that has never happened though because you dwell on the owners they don't want to do anything to stop that cash flow and they'll kiss the players bet and just let it go on You've got to have rules and regulations in every part of a civilized society. And right now, the NFL is not civilized. They're not doing it the right way. They used to be, like it was said earlier, the cash cow of all sports. Now it is slipping in popularity because of these slovenly athletes that are demanding that they have their way instead of the owner's way. It's got to stop. Well, that's true, because right now, yeah, the uh, in. The uh, Major League Baseball, mostly, and uh, hockey, and really even to a lesser extent, the NBA. Popularity-wise, they're all more popular than the NFL right now. I'll tell you what, President Trump saluted NASCAR the other day when he was making a speech, and he made the comment, and I agree with him, that NASCAR is the only thing that stands up for the prayer and the national anthem, and he's right. Caller, thank you for your call this morning. You got it, bud. Have a great day. All right, sir. Thank you very much. No, I don't think there's a problem. All they need to do is just treat these people as employees, with respect, of course, if they deserve it, and say there's a clause in the contract that says you will play by my rules. You will stand for the national anthem. You will not show disrespect or get your duffel bag, Junior. You're out of here. I want to say thank you to our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. And they say if you're going on a road trip, oh, road trip, road trip, they've got all the tires for your car, your pickup, your SUV, horse trailer, boat trailer, whatever. Like for your pickups, that backcountry touring HD, ooh, outstanding ride, quality noise canceling features. It's a good one at your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. And don't forget they offer a free pre trip safety check before you leave town. Check the air in your tires, the brake components, the wheel alignment to check for tire wear, front end components, shocks and struts, batteries. Oh, they care. They really care and provide a great service to you. All seven locations of your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, Twist Family and Paul, Daniel on Poline and Twin Falls, and Randy on Overland and Burley. The absolute best. Your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. You know, Dennis Prager, uh, on the East Coast, I believe Dennis uh, operates a talk show back in uh, Massachusetts, I believe. He came out this morning and he said something on an interview that I absolutely think is correct. And for those out there that don't like it, I guess turn the dial. He said, quote, the left has a problem with evil. They accept it, and they embellish it. I thought about that, and it really seems to be true when you hear outstandingly stupid comments by Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer and the rest of the Democratic Party. Uh, They do seem to have a problem with evil, and they do seem to accept it and embellish it. So, is that their party platform? God help us. God help them.
We're going to take a little break, and uh, Dave Bego is going to be here with us, and we're going to be talking about uh, quite a few different topics, as we always do every Wednesday. And then at 9.30, we've got Attorney Jonathan Wood with the Pacific Legal Foundation coming on to talk about sports betting. 10.06, one of our favorite guests, Megan Barth, is going to be on the program. And then at 10.30 this morning, part three of Frosty Woldridge, uh, illegal immigration and refugee problems coming to the United States. All of this and more for the rest of the morning. Don't you go away. Zeb at the Ranch Wheels, I'm going to turn it over to you to take us up to CBS News. Oh, good morning, good morning, good morning on a Wednesday, May 23rd. Zeb Bell, Zeb at the Ranch, along with my board op, old buddy Wheels, and of course our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you. And uh, don't forget some of our great advertisers like Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley, helping you get back to being you. Right now, Wheels, how about a good word for our friends from Western Waste? From the canyons of the Snake River and the lacrosse of Southern Idaho, we're always in Georgia's circle. Western Waste Services, we care about our community, our resources, and this great land. Western Waste Services is lending a hand, always at Georgia's circle. Western Way Services, you've heard me for a long time tell you all about their services, and I urge you to give them a call and get on the route service. Boy, I tell you what, you can set your watch by these folks. They are there to pick up your garbage, and then they're gone, and so is your garbage. I'll tell you, they are fast and efficient. Western Way Services, always at your disposal. Give them a call today, 734-6969. And don't forget, uh, on Thursdays, we have a program, and we really have learned an awful lot about the great, great people and services at Casher Regional Hospital. Your friends, your neighbors, Casher Regional Hospital, quality care co- close to home. And that program at 917 on Thursdays for Casher Regional Hospital serving you. Don't forget that tomorrow on Thursday. And we also want to say a big thank you, and I mean this because this is one of the nicest guys in the whole world and his family and his staff serving you at Hanson Mortuary, 710 6th Street in Rupert, Joel Heward, the manager. And we know, uh, we all know, that we uh, have to go through the passing of loved ones and uh, they're there to serve you, always there to serve you and take care of everything with the highest ethical standards with unquestioned integrity. Please give them a call, 436-5636. That number again, Hanson Mortuary, 710 6th Street in Rupert, 436-5636, with Joel Heward, and Joel also serving you and your family, at Morrison Payne Funeral Home on East Main in Burley. Right now, on Wednesdays, we get an opportunity, we, myself, everybody gets an opportunity to listen to a very successful businessman and a great political analyst as far as what's going on in the world today, and that's my dear friend Dave Beagle. Good morning, Dave. How are you? Uh, good morning. Uh, doing well, Zeb. Hope you and your wife are both doing well. Well, uh, we'll know more in the next couple of days, but it's so good to have you on the program. Dave, uh, there's quite a few things I want to mention this morning, kind of a shotgun approach. And I want to start with, uh, and I don't know if you agree with me or not, but when you talk about killers in our society, like MS-13, and their motto is to kill, rape, and control, and the absolute uh, horrendous ways that they have killed their victims. I absolutely agree with Donald Trump. I will not back up for anyone. I agree with his statement about they are animals. What are your thoughts? Well, they are, and they're a part of this group that's trying to bring down this country, Zeb. And, uh, you know, this, with all the shootings that are going on, I believe is a conspiracy. And uh, they're doing these things uh, to... um, turn us into a communistic country that they can control us and uh yeah i think it's going to get worse i mean how many bad shootings we had already in this country this year 20 or so yes and 
And when you look at them, a couple of things I want to point out. One is most of them are done in uh, uh, pretty liberal areas, like the, the one down in Houston, which is a pretty liberal town down in that area. Um, but I really believe that uh, the left is uh, setting up these shootings so that they can implement gun control and take our guns away from us and, and leave us defenseless. Dave, I am not going to argue that, and I'm not going to give the name of the individual that I visited with yesterday on the telephone that is a highly successful businessman from out of my area, but also has been involved in politics. He shares the very same viewpoint that you do, that these are, I hate to use the word staged, but staged events that have absolutely been meaning one thing, and that's to have the ultimate goal of more control over American citizens and a complete uh, removal, if you will, of the Second Amendment. Yeah, and I think that's exactly what it is, because, you know, uh, removing guns from people is just one of the, um, remember I'll go back to the uh, the Cloward and Piven, uh, the uh, theses they wrote when at uh, Columbia University on how to bring down this country, and um, and one of them is uh, removing guns from this country. And, uh, you know, besides, um, you know, high welfare, high entitlements, uh, you know, high national debt, uh, uh, education control, um, you know, common core, obviously, um, health care control with Obamacare. I mean, you just go on and on, and you look at these things, and they just keep pushing these agendas to try and uh, bring this country down. Let me ask you about a comment that I heard earlier this morning, and I'm not making a direct quote. I'm paraphrasing what I heard, and I know I'm almost 99.9% accurate. Do you know who Dennis Prager is, talk show host on the East Coast? Uh, yeah, I've seen him, yeah. Okay. He made this comment, and I thought about it, and I'm going to agree with him on this comment. He said, the left has a problem with evil. They accept it and they embellish it. How would you respond to that? Mm-hmm. Well, I think he's, he's, he's right. And uh, the trouble is, is they don't care what it takes to achieve their uh, objectives. You know, they'll, they'll say one thing and do another and then go back and, and uh, reverse themselves. And uh, they'll, have, they'll use any tactics they can, whether they're, they're morally right or morally wrong. Um, and uh, this is what people need to understand about the left, you know, and, and they try and, and sue these people and, and smooch them and that and by saying, you know, we're doing this for you, we want to help you, we want to give you this and make more money and all that kind of But at the end of the day... The fact is, is they don't care about these people. They just want to control them. Absolutely. And I look at the feigned uh, response uh, by Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer and some of these other very phony Democrats. And Nancy coming out, they're only using and utilizing uh, some of the verbiage of Donald Trump to work against Donald Trump in this administration. He called them animals, MS-13. They are. And then Nancy Pelosi comes out with this teary-eyed response about, oh, they're all God's children. Children, we can't call them animals. I am so fed up with the protection of maimers and killers in our society by the left. Well, I am too, and uh, we got to wake up America. And uh, as I've mentioned before on your show, I think more and more people on both sides um, uh, are starting to, to see the light. But uh, we need people to stand up and have backbone um, and do something to uh, stop this. And uh, that's um, that's the problem we have, especially with uh, our, our people in Washington. Okay, now I'm not trying to put you on the spot, Dave, but how? How do we create a stand-up, stick your chin out, and don't let evil uh, permeate itself in our society? How do we stop this? What do we do to make people realize, get a backbone and stand up for what's right? Well, you know, from the political standpoint... Our politicians got to stand up and tell the truth that's going on out there, and uh, and uh, change laws and regulations that uh, are for the people. Um, but a lot of them, uh, they won't go out and do these things because they're afraid if they do it, then they won't get the votes they need to get reelected. And uh, you know that's that's just things that we got to have done. 
the other thing is is that uh, we got to have uh, people across the country and uh, business owners and uh, and that stand up and uh, uh, fight back and say we're not going to put up with this stuff we're not going to put up with the uh, you know your social justice and political correctness and and all this kind of stuff we're going to run our companies and treat our people well and do the right things we're not going to listen to your stuff i mean i was reading an article about uh, a university that uh, they're losing, um, and it's out in the state of Washington, that they're losing enrollment big time, and uh, they can't get people interested in because uh, kids, uh, students at the university can't stand up and and, uh, and and speak their mind and tell the right things because uh, all these uh, hardwired uh, kids on the left who are being, you know, uh, told to do this by the left, um, uh, call them politically incorrect and bring them down and all that kind of stuff. And uh, it's great to see that uh, uh, there are universities, and we need more universities, to stand up and say, we're not putting up with this anymore. We want kids here that can stand up and talk and uh, use their free speech. Absolutely. And very well stated, Dave. Very well stated. I want to talk to you a little bit about the Trump administration. And way before he was elected president when he was campaigning, Trump came out and said that, yes, there are moles in our campaign, and they are spying on us. They are listening to us on our phone conversations, and they're wiretapping us. Everybody kind of guffawed and said, oh, Donald Trump, you're nuts, and everything else. But now, now it's starting to come out to where even Mr. Potato head, better known as James Clapper, they are starting to admit that there was wrongdoing, and I hope that these people end up wearing orange jumpsuits. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you've got to expose these people and uh, uh, make them, uh, you know, go through the process and, uh, and uh, you know, pay for what they've, uh, what they've done to this country and to other people and stuff like that, and... Uh, it's good that Trump's uh, willing to stand up and do that, and uh, I think he should have started, uh, you know, going through the um, the administration and, and uh, all the different departments uh, a lot faster, sooner than this, and getting these people out because, uh, uh, again, these are people that uh, uh, they don't like this country. They want to change who we are, and. Uh, you know, I call it bringing down America, and uh, we can't let them do that. Absolutely. Dave, you sent me, not too many days ago, about nine pages of a uh, letter that was sent to you regarding right to work and uh, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals and trying to wipe out every right to work law in the United States. I can't possibly do due diligence to this story in just uh, the remainder of time, about nine minutes, but give us your synopsis of what is happening, what's trying to occur through the left, and what your thoughts are. Well, you know, this is actually out in your state of uh, Idaho. That's right. Um, that's there's right. There's a union out there that's attacking the right-to-work law, and uh, what they're trying to do is expand this, not just to eliminate right-to-work in Idaho, but um, to... Uh, get the uh, the judges to say that right to work is unconstitutional across this country and it needs to be uh, eradicated um, in this in this case and um, uh, that's what they're really pushing hard on and and this all goes back to the fact that unions continue to lose membership uh, they're in a downward spiral and they're doing anything they can uh, to uh, regain their status and membership and everything so they can go out. And the reason they want right to work on is so they can go out and force unionize people. And that's what this is all about. All they want is the dues money uh, from these people for their own pocketbook and their political agenda. Well, may I add an addendum to that? It's more than just the dues money. It's absolutely having control over that voting power, is it not? Oh, absolutely it is. And uh, this is... uh, you know, they, they want to uh, control people so that uh, when we go into this election uh, in November that uh, they can tell people who to vote for and force them to vote for certain people uh, and, you know, you know, bring the Democratic Party back into power in Congress and the Senate. And uh, people need to understand this stuff. Absolutely. Three states uh, that have the right-to-work laws, Idaho, Arizona, and Nevada, uh, basically they'd go by the wayside if the Ninth Circuit Court has their way and will. Is that correct? Yeah, and here's the thing. The Ninth Circuit Court is, uh, 
always been known to be very, very liberal. Oh, boy. And they, yeah. they feel the chances of this happening are, are very, very good. Uh, the Ninth Circuit Court will be um, um, uh, vote in favor of the unions. And uh, th- this is a scary thing. And if you, you being out in Idaho... Anything more you can learn about it and pass on to your audience and to me, we'd appreciate it. Absolutely. Uh, Dave, give us a, a Dave Beagle scenario of what would happen nationwide if this is uh, the right to work law stricken by the Ninth Circuit Court. I mean, what, what would happen prior to possibly the presidential election in 2020? Um, you're going to see... Uh, again, and it's already starting to happen, and I've, and I've talked to businessmen here uh, just in the past week that uh, have approached me and said, uh, Dave, uh, we're seeing more and more union activity behind the scenes, and um, they're starting to um, use the old uh, tricks like they used against you, the corporate campaigns, death mm-hmm. by a thousand cuts, yep. and trying to force unionize behind the scenes that... Uh, and the press is keeping it quiet just so they can go out and get these things done behind the scenes so that even uh, normal Americans and the Republican Party doesn't know how bad it's getting. And But uh, people need to understand, from what I'm hearing uh, from other business people that I uh, meet with, uh, it's getting worse and worse. And as we move towards the election, it's going to get even worse. And if right to work is gone... They're really going to go after companies. Absolutely. Uh, You mentioned about the media. I absolutely have done a search, and I can't find any media covering this. You're 100% right. Yeah, I I think the the unions uh, realize that uh, that that causes them more problems than it helps them. I mean, you know, when the SEIU came after us, they loved to get in front of the media and have the media throw out all the barbs against us and slurs and stuff like that. Um, but uh, I think they realize is that that hurt them, and uh, so they're just keeping it quiet. They want to go about and use their uh, forced unionization campaigns, and uh, you know, force people to be unionized against their wills. And uh, if right to work's out of there, you know, people and companies can't uh, use that to stay out of it. One final story I wanted you to comment on this morning, Dave, and it, it, to me it makes no sense that it has to be going this long and the problem is still exacerbated without a solution. The NFL says it is, quote, searching for a policy to cope with the kneeling and sitting during the national anthem. Well, I've got one. And you as a businessman and former athlete, you can tell me if I'm wrong. My policy is they are private contractors, they being the football players. And Jerry Jones and the owners are signing contracts to hire them, but upon signing them, there needs to be a clause in the contract that says you will play by my rules, you will stand during the national anthem, you will show respect to our country and our flag. If not, don't let the door hit you in the posterior on the way out of the locker room. It's plain and simple. they just got to give the owners, I think, more power because they are the employers that are paying these people. Yeah, I agree with you. But the other part problem with that is, is the uh, the uh, NFL union. You know, they're behind the players. There you go. There you and go. Giving the uh, getting contracts uh, in place that allow the owners to do some of this stuff is part of the problem, and they're they're fighting this big time. And again, it comes back to the union situation and. Uh, these owners need to stand up to the unions and tell them we're not going to put up with this stuff anymore. Well, and we're going to eliminate the stuff in the contracts that keeps us from doing these things. Yeah, but Dave, I mentioned last half hour, and I want to get your response on this. I said there was a movie put out about 12, 13 years ago. Uh, it was called The Replacements. And the same situation to where the NFL had problems with its players. They went on strike, and so they hired replacement players, and they played with more gut, more try, more heart. And honestly, if it comes to that, I'm all in favor of it. Uh, yeah, yeah, and that's the way it should be. I mean, uh, people got to realize that, uh, you know, nothing in this world is given to you. You have to go out and earn it and work hard and persevere and all that if you want to succeed. Um, and, uh, of course, the left, it's just the opposite for them. We want to give this all to you. We want to take care of you and, you know, basically babysit you. And uh, it's time for uh, people to wake up. That uh, That's a communism, socialism. Look at uh, places like Venezuela. Yeah. 
Absolutely. One quick remark from you. Tommy Lauren, a uh, conservative talk show host, she was sitting in a restaurant in Minneapolis, Minnesota with her mom and her dad after, I believe it was a church service they had attended, and people in the restaurant came by, started yelling and jeering at her and throwing water on her. Is that the best personality the left can show? These people are idiots. That, this is who they are. It's part of their tactics. It's intimidation tactics. And, uh, you know, they tried to do the same thing with our employees and people and customers and stuff like that. I mean, it, it's sad what they do. I mean, I think, uh, you know, if people read my book, uh, they read that they'd follow our employees home at night and uh, beat on their doors. And when the employee opened the door, they'd smash their way in and intimidate oh, and threaten them. And, I mean, this is who these people are. Um, they don't understand how to operate and be successful in our free market society. You know what? They broke into people's homes after they answered the door. They pushed and shoved their way in. Why weren't they prosecuted for assault and, and breaking and entering? Well, because what happens is, is that, uh, uh, you know, they're threatened by these people. You better not tell anybody about this. You better oh, call my. the authorities. Oh, or my. We'll be coming after you. Oh, and my the, goodness. They know that intimidation works. And, uh, and not just... You know, with employees, but even business owners. I, there's, I mentioned in my book that um, a business owner out of Fort Wayne, Indiana, he read my first book, The Devil at My Doorstep, and he came down to Indianapolis to have breakfast with me. And uh, he said, Dave, I read your book. He says, I agree with everything you did. And he says, you know, I own a manufacturing company, but he says, I couldn't have gone through and done what you did. I, I, I don't have the backbone. I couldn't have put up with it um, physically or psychologically the things that you guys went through. And uh, he says... I just I can't do it. He says, I know we need more people in this country to be that way and stand up. Wow. I'm just shaking my head. Dave Bego, thank you so much for being on the program this morning. Author, business entrepreneur, great guy. Dave Bego, Indianapolis, Indiana, thank you so much. Well, thanks for having me on, and I uh, hope things go well for you and the family. I appreciate it, Dave. Thank you so much. I, I look forward to next Wednesday. Thank you. Appreciate right. it. Talk to you later. My friend, Dave Bego. By the way, I also want to remind you about Ark Animal Hospital at 750 21st Street near Connection Credit Union in Hayburn. They have the warm hearts for the cold noses. What do you mean? Well, they're a mixed animal practice, meaning big or small. They love them all, and they take care of them all. They want you to have healthy animals. Absolutely. And don't forget, to the proper identification for your pets. And they've got what you need over at their office, Ark Animal Hospital at 750 21st Street in Hayburn. Now, here's the number 678 1177. You call them, they can help. They've been uh, voted Minicash's best veterinary hospital many, many times. They do have the warm hearts for the cold noses at Ark Animal Hospital. And we also want to remind you about, and I'm stuttering here because I can't find the paper. Oh, yes, Ervana is defined as the ultimate level of comfort you'll achieve with the presence of a new Lennox home comfort system. When you buy a new Lennox system at Ramsey Heating and Electric, you can get up to $1,700 in rebates. Wow. Ervana is just another way to make you feel better. So call Ramsey Heating and Electric today at 678-0459 or go to the website, ramseysonline.com. Really, really nice people. Lots of things going on over the next couple of days. This is Memorial Day weekend, and drive carefully if you're going someplace. Please, please, please look out for all the people on the roadway with you. you got to drive defensively. Uh, don't forget, too, Memorial Day savings at Lee's Furniture floors and more friday saturday and monday no money down no interest for 12 months on approved credit <laughs> you'd better get in there to lee's furniture floors and more furniture mattresses accessories floor and window coverings oh my goodness yes you can save up to 40 percent on all their furniture yes and they've got a beauty rest memorial day sale oh my goodness on the mattresses you get in and check it out and talk to the people that really know about your comfort and the uh, furniture for your home. I mean, the carpets, everything at Lee's Furniture, Floors, and more. 459 Overland in Burley. You stop in and see them today. Don't miss it. Absolutely. 
Uh, and also, yesterday, uh, we had Vicky at Vicky's Country Garden on our program. <laughs> we get a lot of people that send uh, little email letters and calls and everything. Ask Miss Vicky about the bugs and all this kind of stuff. Vicky's Country Garden, 185 South, 600 West of Paul. And uh, they're celebrating 21 years in business. And that program is on at 930 every Tuesday with Vicky's Country Garden. Don't miss it. Or give her a call at 438-5663. Vicki's Country Garden, 185 South, 600 West of Paul. And I thank her for all of her great gardening tips. She is quite the lady. We're about ready to go with our next guest on the program. In just a moment, i got to also tell you about Let's Ride. Oh, yeah, get your motor running. Boom, boom, crank it up. Head for the hills. Let's Ride, 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and the World. They're open Monday through Friday, 9 to 6, Saturdays 9 to 4. And they've got all the four-wheelers. They've got all the side-by-sides. They've got a great big accessory department. You go into that showroom, and you're going to go, holy buckets, how did they get all this stuff in here? And then... Then they've also got the best doggone service department around to keep you running. So what am I talking about? Let's ride. 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and the World. This really is where the fun is sold. Let's ride. Right now, we're going to go to the phone line. I am so discombobulated here this morning. I've had all my papers fall on the floor a little bit ago and pick this one up, and that doesn't go with that one, and this one matches the other one. I believe we have now, from the Pacific Legal Foundation, Jonathan Wood. He's always organized and has all of his papers in a row. Good morning, Jonathan. How are you? Good morning, Zab. I'm doing well, and how are you? I just told you, I'm discombobulated. I dropped all my papers on the floor. <laughs> As a lawyer, have you ever gone to court and had everything absolutely itemized, categorized, and ready to go, and dropped it in a great big mess? Uh, yes, I have. And what I find is even when that doesn't happen, once your adrenaline starts rushing, you can't keep things straight anyway. So it's simply hopeless. Whatever organizing you're doing, when you're in the courtroom, it's all out the window. You know, that's really the truth in almost any circumstance. Jonathan, what's going on, and what's your take with the Pacific Legal Foundation on sports betting? Uh, Well, PLF is neutral on on, on sports betting. We've never taken a position, but we're very excited about a decision that came down from the U.S. Supreme Court last week, which struck down the federal ban on sports betting. We think that decision is important regardless of what you think about the underlying activity because it is a key win for federalism and protects the Constitution our founders designed. Okay, now, I'm not trying to play devil's advocate, but I'm sure going to ask some questions on this. Uh, Why do you think this is a good thing? Because the Supreme Court stepped in and protected the relationship between the federal government and the states. A federal law called the Professional and Amateur Sports Protection Act purported to dictate the states what their own law should be. That is an unprecedented law in the history of of our Constitution and is at odds with the basic design our founders intended. They intentionally divided up power at the federal level between different branches and between the federal government and the states to ensure that no political force would ever be able to consolidate too much power. They wanted the federal government to be directly accountable to the people and the states to be directly accountable to the people. And when the federal government starts dictating rules to the states, treating them like puppets, that accountability is broken. Jonathan, you're a sharp guy, and you've been on this program many, many times in the past, and I hope you'll keep coming back. But then I would say back to you in this regard, won't this ruling cause more of a problem in other areas and with other regards involving the sanctuary city policy. Here we are, we have mayors defying the federal government and ICE and protecting illegal felons. Isn't that going to open up the door to where there's going to be more of that negative nature? I don't think it's a problem at all. The Supreme Court in its decision explained that Congress and the federal government are free to regulate within their sphere of of power under the Constitution, but they have it to do it directly. They can't try to use the states as puppets, and that's something I think any supporter of federalism would believe in. So to the extent you're concerned about immigration, the answer is the federal government needs to spend the resources 
that it takes to enforce the laws. It can't rely or, or force the states to do it for them. You know, and uh, this is probably out on the margin of the paper talking about this subject, but I have never been in favor of sports betting, whether it's in Vegas or whether it's now going to be possibly and probably in every state in the United States. I think there's going to be some negativity. I think there's going to be some more than gray areas, and I'm not a real fan of this. I can appreciate that, and one of the important lessons of the Supreme Court's decision is that no state has to legalize sports betting. If states don't want it, they're perfectly free to retain their prohibitions. And if the federal government wants to directly prohibit it under federal law, it can do that. All the Supreme Court was saying is that the federal government can't force the state to do its bidding. And, And that's something that should trouble everyone regardless of how they feel about sports betting. You know, I can see your premise on this, and I agree with it, that uh, basically giving more power to the states and more power of saying no to big brother government. I I just am really worried, I think in a nutshell, about the sports betting atmosphere and also the uh, kind of the the dark hand with the black glove reaching out and hurting maybe local communities. And I can understand, I mean, from my perspective, sports betting is complicated. I I can certainly sympathize with your concerns. I don't gamble and have no interest in it. But at the same time, you have to recognize that the two decades of prohibition we've experienced has essentially failed. The illegal black market for sports betting is huge. It's well over a $100 billion a year market. People publicly place bets on every major sports uh, sporting event. The president, uh, former President Barack Obama even went on national television to brag about betting on the Super Bowl. This is a law that wasn't being enforced well, and all it was doing was enriching organized crime. So I can also sympathize with the concerns of states that want to deal with that problem and think that a legal and properly regulated sports betting market is better than a failed prohibition. I see. So with Pacific Legal Foundation, what was your input or what was your uh, uh, net result to help this case with this determination by the Supreme Court? What did you do and or say? Uh, So PLF filed an amicus brief, several amicus briefs actually in the Supreme Court, urging them to take the case and to decide it the right way, which they did on the grounds that this is a key federalism concern across many issues. Essentially, regardless of what policy issue is the most important to you, you're better off if the federal government can't force the states to do anything. You want to preserve accountability to ensure that your state politicians have to answer to you rather than to people in Washington. And, And that is the value that ultimately was protected by the Supreme Court's decision. If you care about education, guns, uh, immigration or, or the environment, what, essentially whatever it is, you're better off preserving the division of power between the federal government and the states, keeping those separate than allowing the federal government to treat states as puppets. Absolutely. Let me ask you something, Jonathan. If you don't want to get into this gray area outside the lines here on this other story, I can understand because I didn't give you any time for preparation. But isn't what you're talking about right there also what's happening with the national right to work and the Ninth Circuit Court trying to strike that down? Uh, I have to confess I'm not uh, not up on that case. Um, but you're, you're right that to the extent that the federal government tries to interfere with states uh, shifting towards right to work, this decision protects those states. And, and it protects all states, regardless of political leanings. I think one of the most important lessons of federalism that our founders enshrined in the Constitution is that it ensures that regardless of who is control in, in the federal government, the states provide some resistance. So right now, because the Republicans control the federal government, it's blue states resisting that the growing federal power. When the politics switch and we have a Democrat in office in, in the White House, Republican states will serve that same important function. And that's what's most important. It's about preserving that division of power and preventing the concentration of too much power in, in too few hands. Um, 
that our founding fathers recognized is the greatest threat to individual liberty. And I'm just going to say this, but I would imagine, and I'll stand corrected if you tell me I'm wrong, I would imagine by the states having the right to say yes or no on organized sports betting, maybe they, the states, might have more of uh, power and people involved to make sure that it doesn't come in if they don't want it in, or if it does come in, more regulation. Am I wrong on my assumption? No, I, I think you're exactly right. It's unlikely that the federal government will ever play a significant role in enforcing any regulations dealing with sports betting. Um, there's just not a lot, not enough resources or interest at the federal level. So this is ultimately going to have to come down to what do the states want to do and are they willing to put in the resources for it? And you're better off with the states making those decisions themselves. Yeah. Across the country, you had states that had to prohibit sports gambling because of the federal law but had no interest in doing it, so the law stayed on the books and wasn't enforced. And that's sort of a worst-case scenario, because it breeds resentment and distrust of the law. You know, Jonathan, you're sharp. I really enjoy having you on on behalf of the Pacific Legal Foundation. Tell us a little bit about PLF, and if people want to follow various cases, what do they do? So PLF is the nation's oldest nonprofit law firm dedicated to the ideals enshrined in our Constitution and Declaration of Independence. We represent ordinary people in, uh, in uh, we represent ordinary people in protecting their rights against the government in courts nationwide. Anyone who wants to learn anything more about our important work can go to our website, which is PacificLegal.org. I appreciate you, Jonathan Wood. I hope you have a great summer and come back soon. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, sir. Jonathan Wood with the Pacific Legal Foundation. I'm really, I've got mixed emotions about this. Um, I am not a fan. I know a lot of you might be surprised, but I'm not a fan at all of uh, betting on sports. I think there is eventually that dark hand with the glove, you know, that I said has too much control. I know a lot of you say, well, maybe if it's regulated and it's out in front of everything and out in the open air might be better and safer. I don't know. I just think that there's too many opportunities to have a jaded game or a outcome that's not exactly the best or the most honest. What are your thoughts on that? Give me a call. 436 2244 1866 927 4587. Give me a jingle. I'd like to hear what your thoughts are. Don't forget Cameron and Siemens Insurance. <laughs> I bit my tongue. <laughs> Hertz, uh, Cameron and Siemens Insurance. There, it sounds better. Highway 24 in Rupert. Uh, all the life insurance, health insurance, retirement planning, employee benefits, all of this and more from folks that are very dedicated and responsive to your needs. All you need to do, all you need to do is just call them, make an appointment, and they will help you. 436-4424, Cameron and Siemens Insurance in Rupert. You give them a call today. Really, really good people. What do you think about uh, legalized and organized sports betting all across the country? It, possibly, possibly in every state. I'm I'm not a big fan of it. Four three six two two four four one eight six six nine two seven four five eight seven. I'd like to hear what your thoughts are on any one of the stories that we've talked about so far this morning. I think I'm going to do a weather forecast, and then I'm going to come back and talk a little bit about graduations and how many, many colleges and universities are slanted against conservatives and how they really tried to point the finger at conservatives. We'll talk about that in just a minute. Right now it is time, and I'll take your phone calls too on any subject you want to talk about. Time to have our weather forecast, and it's brought to you by some friends of ours. Absolutely, Phillips Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company. And they have offices at 1710 Overland and Burley and 655th Street in Rupert. Absolutely, they thank you for your business and look forward to serving you in the future. They've been providing accounting services to the Minicash area for well over 50 years. They are good. They are good. Tax return preparation, tax planning, bookkeeping services, financial statement preparation, retirement planning, and the list goes on and on. They know their business and can help you with yours. Phillips Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company. And right now, here's the weather. 
here's your weather forecast as we hit midweek stride. And for the morning hours, we're going to see some sunshine. But as we move through the day and into the afternoon, maybe some storms. Here's your weather forecast for Zebeth the Ranch. Partly sunny skies as we begin the day. But as we move through the afternoon, some storms are going to be rolling in that could produce small hail, gusty winds, and heavy rain. Mostly cloudy skies by this afternoon as well with the high of 71. That could continue for tonight with the low of 51. Tomorrow, 20% chance of showers and thunderstorms in the afternoon. Mostly sunny skies. We are expecting a high close to 80. For tomorrow night, 20% chance of showers and thunderstorms with a low of 52. For Friday, sunny, about mid-80s. 83 is what we're expecting. And then for Saturday, 20% chance of showers and thunderstorms. Mostly sunny skies and a high of 76. That's your weather forecast. Thank you, Gina. Great job. I'll tell you what, Phillips Oaks, Goodwin Crane and Company, they welcome you, your questions, and they can serve you. Absolutely, with two offices, one in Burley, one in Rupert. Don't forget the professionals at Phillips Oaks, Goodwin Crane and Company. All right, your turn. Time for calls. 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Did you ever listen to the news, really listen to the news, uh, the news that's honest and unbiased, which it's hard to find, uh, but a young woman that was the head of the Campus Republicans organization, I cannot, for the life of me, uh, I apologize, can't remember the name of the college. It was back east. It'll hit me in a minute while I'm telling you the story. But anyway, at graduation, on her cap, her graduation cap, she had placed a small little sticker that was Trump and Pence. President Trump and Vice President Pence. And she's standing in line and ready to go up on the stage and get her diploma. And the rest of the students and the people there, they started booing her and yelling things at her because she is a conservative. Now, how many times do you ever hear the roles reversed? I can't say that I ever have. But here is a young woman, very articulate extremely articulate, that is the head and was the head of the campus conservatives, didn't do a thing wrong, absolutely uh, respectful, had a little bitty sticker on the back of her cap uh, at graduation that said Trump and Pence, and all of a sudden the liberal left, oh, they can't stand that, and they're going to start booing her and chastising her. Really? Really, is that what we're coming to in this country? Is a complete denigration of conservatives? A complete denigration of family values? A complete denigration of those of us that are Christians? And I'm never going to back up from that. What's going on here? It's like Dennis Prager said early this morning on that newscast, the left has a problem with evil. They accept it. What are your thoughts on that? Give me a call. There's a lot of things in our society right now that absolutely we need a big, big broom and a dustpan to clean up. But like I was talking to Dave Beagle a little bit ago, people have got to stand up and get some backbone. If you see something that's not right, if you hear something that's not right, are you speaking out against it or just saying, oh, well, ho-hum, somebody ought to do something about it? We're the somebody. We're the people that need to stand up and say, no, this has got to stop. Are we doing that? It's like the conservative talk show host, Tommy Lauren. Uh, You've seen her on television many, many times. Sitting in a restaurant with her mother and father, not doing any public speaking, not doing anything at all except just sitting there enjoying a meal. And then people recognized her, and then they go over and start yelling at her and calling her names and throwing drinks on her? So they had to leave the restaurant? Well, number one, where's the management? Why didn't they have the backbone to stand up and tell those crazy louts that were causing the problem, pay your bill, get out of Dodge City, and don't come back? Oh, no, no, no. They'd rather see a conservative... And her family literally have to take that evil, well, they won't come back, and let the evildoers come back as wanted customers? 
Are you kidding me? Is that where we're at in our society? Oh, well, I didn't want to make waves. I had people tell me here just about two weeks ago, well, I didn't say anything because I don't want to make waves. Well, dang, I do. I want to make waves. I want to make sure that uh, when they denigrate Christianity, I'm there to tell them, and I mean tell them, that they're wrong. We need to stand up. Where are you? Where are the phone calls right now? Where are people standing up and saying, you're right, and by golly, if that ever happens, I'm going to stand up for that person. Somebody in that restaurant should have stood up for Tommy Lahren and her mom and dad. Somebody in that graduation ceremony should have stood up for that young woman, and when she was being booed and hissed and yelled at, they should have stood up and said, that's enough, including the school administration. But nobody did. Nobody wanted to make waves. That's pitiful. Calls are welcome, 436-224-1-866-927-4587. Redder Showcase, and they are going to have a big, big, big Memorial Day sale. It's going to start today and go Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then special hours on Monday from 10 to 4. Yep, yep, they've got it all over there. Maytag, Whirlpool, KitchenAid, Amana, Speed Queen, oh, yeah, Six months, same as cash on approved credit. Uh, Twelve months, same as cash on approved credit. And then, oh my goodness, they're ready to serve you. Get in there and check out all the great buys for this big Memorial Day sale at Redder Showcase 2611 Overland in Burley. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Hey, Zeb. I try to do exactly what you say we need to do every day. Every day I get up and I think about what I should do to do the right thing because there's enough people running around doing the wrong thing there's enough people running around who seem to not care they don't care about their country they don't care about their kids all they care is what's on their phone on them phones I'm about sick of phones but they're our lives they're in our lives and there's good things about them and then there's very bad things and so you say you know, what does it take for people to realize what they what's important? We, you know, we, do we fight this revolution peacefully, or does it become a bloody bath in the street? It might. That ain't funny. No, no, I, and I didn't mean it to be humorous. When I said it might, it might come to that. It will. I mean, it might. I just, I just. You know, you know, we live in we live here in southern Idaho, but you know, Twin Falls is growing fast. It may be the fastest growing area in the western states, and southern Idaho is growing. It's just like Frosty said yesterday. Yeah, I don't even know remember what he said, but in 2050, if we have that kind of influx of of people who don't care, who are distracted, who you know, we need patriots who love America. I love my Heavenly Father, I love my family, and I love my country. And that's what we've got to tell ourselves every day. Absolutely. We've got to be, stand up, be counted. You know, and, and listening to you and what you say when you call in on this program, I know you can be counted on. But it's the people that sit there and they kind of turn their back with a blind eye and a deaf ear and say, oh, well, it's not my problem. Oh, I didn't want to get involved. Are we that much of a cowardly society that we can't get involved for what's right? Boy, I'm worried about that, Randy. Real quick, I've only got 20 seconds left. If we don't do what is right, uh, you know, then the only other option, you know, if if there's a void... And, and, and the right is no longer being implemented by the people, then the evil will, will flourish and fill the void. And, and, and that's what it's done. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, we've got to stand up. Randy, thank you very much for your comments. I appreciate it. You bet, Zeb. Thank, thank you. He's right. And, and really, I'll go back and say what I said. Do you turn a blind eye and a deaf ear to this thing and kind of go, oh, well, if I turn my back on it, maybe it'll go away? No. You've got to get involved and speak out. You've got to. 
We're going to have a slight change in the order here. Right now, I'm going to tell you about some great places to go eat if you're hungry and starving to death. I know some great places to go. How about the AC Drive-In at 601 East Main in Burley? Oh, the shrimp and small fry, just 7 bucks. The famous Farmer Brown Burgers. I love them. So do my grandsons. Absolutely with fries and that special sauce and maybe your favorite flavor of milkshake. Oh, ho, 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 it's good. AC AC Drive-In, 601 East Main in Burley. Well, how about Taco Bandito, 2301 Overland in Burley? Man, oh man, they got the street tacos, the choice of meat, either steak, pork, or fire-roasted salsa chicken. Woo-hoo! Choice of cheese, taco sauce. This will really set your taste buds off. Delicious. And also, don't forget those breakfast burritos. All of this and so much more at Taco Bandito, 2301 Overland in Burley. Well, let's not forget two locations of Burgers Etc. 124 South Oneida in Rupert and 700 Overland in Burley with the medium spicy chicken combo with fries and drink only five bucks. Five bucks! And every Sunday at the Burley location, shrimp dinner only five ninety nine. Holy cow, great people! And they got the fresh strawberry shakes too at Burgers Etc. in Rupert and Burley. And real quick, don't forget Stevo's at 290 South, 600 West of Hayburn and the patio's open on Friday night, live music on the weekends. Oh, delicious buffalo burgers and fantastic salads. You're going to love the food and nice, nice people at Stevo's, 290 South, 600 West of Hayburn. And those are some great places to go if you're hungry and starving to death. Caller, I've got exactly one minute. Go. Yes, good morning, Zeb. Uh, what too many people don't realize is that they are living in a twilight zone. If the Democratic Party ever got back into power now, the United States would suddenly go back into number four as far as power goes in the United in the world. I couldn't agree more. Tony, it's always good to hear from you, my dear friend. Uh, say hello to Mary. i got to run to the news here in a second, but thank you for your call. Okay, thank you. All right, buddy. Uh, coming up next half hour, Megan Barth. Always look forward to having her on the air. And then at 10.30 this morning, we have part three with Frosty Woolridge telling it like it is with illegal immigration and refugees coming into this country. And right now we're going to send it back over to Wheels. A little music before we go to CBS News. I'll be back in just a few minutes. my on a wednesday may 2 3 zeb at the ranch good morning good morning i'm glad you're with us and of course our major sponsor your magic valley les schwab tire centers all seven locations serving you get ready for a road trip stop in and see them today the best of tires and the best of service to you at your magic valley les schwab tire centers also some of our great advertisers including burley physical therapy and rehabilitation at 1263 bennett avenue new sweet to in Burley. They are helping you get back to being you. I really enjoy having this next guest on the program. She tells it like it is, and I'll bet you she's got a plethora of items that we can go into this morning and talk about, but she is the uh, co-chair of the Media Equality Project and national spokeswoman of MediaEqualizer.com. Good morning, Megan Barth. How are you? Good morning, Zeb. I'm doing well. Thanks for having me back home. Oh, it's always a pleasure to have you on. You know something? I, I, every morning in the first hour of my program, Megan, I go through kind of an open forum, and I have different stories and make different comments, and we have different callers come in and uh, voice their opinion. It doesn't seem like there's ever an end to the stupidity and idiocy on the left. What would you like to lead with and tell us about this morning? Oh gosh, it's your show. I'll, 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 I'll leave you to the to that. But what I have been watching, and I will talk about this, is I've been keeping a very close eye on Google mm-hmm. and uh, big tech. And there is a uh, a strong monopoly between government, technology, uh, and uh, and media. And this is a very, uh, what I would consider a Molotov cocktail, especially when it comes to free speech. 
Uh, Fox News is even entering the battle. And if you go to my personal website, ReaganBabe.com, uh, Fox News fights, fights the fake news monopoly. And even the chairman of News Corps, which owns Fox News, said that this basically marriage between um, tech and media and government uh, is very dangerous to journalism, mm-hmm. if there's any honest journalism uh, journalist <laughs> left. But because there is such a wide range of censorship going on, whereby Google is manipulating the algorithms on the back end in order to suppress speech on the front end. Mm-hmm. And this is not only a suppression of speech, but it is also the manipulation of opinion in order for people who are looking for the truth or looking for news, they're only fed one stream of news that Google and Facebook alike have deemed quality journalism. Oh, boy. Now, who deems that quality journalism? Well, it's all the big Democrat donors from tech that uh, head Google and head Facebook. And all of their workers, like Mark Zuckerberg said, that you know, it's very hard to find conservatives in and around you know, Silicon Valley. Well, yes, it is. So you have this monolithic thought that's being pushed on an unsuspecting public, uh, creating and changing opinions towards uh, the left. And Fox News is calling this out and is asking for an algorithm review board. And they did so about two weeks ago. And I am not one for establishing boards within government and, you know, uh, you know, increasing government. But in this case, we're talking about monopolies. And Google is a monopoly. Facebook is a monopoly. Google owns 98% of the search traffic. And when Google spits out a search result, it is of their progressive partners. So, right. for example, if you go in your search bar and you type Barack Obama, you will get the same 10 things on the very first page of search. In 60 Minutes did a very good show on this over the weekend. Uh, and so, for example, if you type in Barack Obama, you'll get the New York Times, L.A. Times, Washington Post, Vanity Fair, Glamour, you know, all of their progressive partners. And what happens is their progressive partners hit the clicks, and they get paid. And anyone that's on page two, three, or four doesn't. And so we've seen a huge drop-off in traffic of conservative sites, even center-leaning sites. And uh, the revenues for others are going up and up. Well, Megan, explain to me, I I had a little bio sheet on you, a new one, that said that Google had removed its famous motto, don't be evil. Explain that story to me, would you please? Yeah, that just came across the wire, and thank you. I was just pitched on that last night. Um, Sometime in, they believe, April to May, Google has always operated with the motto kind of code of conduct with their employees, don't be evil. Uh, Well, they removed that. (laughs) They removed that motto on April or May. Now, why would you remove something so simple? Well, that's the big question. And it doesn't even, they didn't announce they removed it. Uh, It it has been removed, however. Uh, Someone caught it. And this is very concerning because Google has a very strong presence within the Department of Defense. Uh, They are one of the leading uh, voices uh, on the Defense Innovation Board. It's headed by Eric Schmidt, who's the former chairman of Google. Uh, And because that they're entering into the, the Department of Defense, or they have, and they are working with AI, for example, artificial intelligence, um, many employees of theirs, I think it was up to, if I'm not mistaken, 3,500, have um, sent a letter in protest uh, that they should not be getting, Google should not be getting involved in war games. Well, when you remove don't be evil <laughs> from your motto and you are aligning yourself with, with government, Department of Defense, political parties, the news media, This is a huge cause for concern, especially when you're a monopoly like Google. Absolutely. And this is why I believe that Fox News is correct, News Corps, the president, that we do need an algorithms review board. We do need a monitor of this monopoly. Heck, even the FCC was investigating Google under Barack Obama, but because Eric Schmidt, who at the time was chairman of Google, 
um, because Eric Schmidt was so instrumental in Barack Obama's win because of the data they had scraped, much like Cambridge Analytica, but of course you never heard about that. Um, but because Eric Schmidt helped Obama win the FCC antitrust case, the investigation was completely closed up and dropped in 2012 or 13. So now the FCC does have some pressure on from various lawmakers and others that that investigation should be reopened into Google. But when you look at, and, and perhaps, you know, antitrust charges levied, however, when you look at how many lawmakers uh, are getting um, contributions from Google, Google has the biggest lobbying arm in D.C. They spent, the, out of any company, they have spent the most money. Google is one of the top three donors to Nancy Pelosi, for example. So you aren't going to find many lawmakers, specifically on the left, that is going to call Google out on their monopoly because Google has a lot of power because they have a lot of money in D.C. You know, when I listen to this, and you're so much more well-versed on this topic than I will ever be, but I'm afraid. Right. I, I'm afraid of the power and the uh, technocracy that could be used against me and other people, and I claim to be a Christian. I try to be a Christian. But I see this tool of Google and other control powers and tech powers to where they can categorize and they can put people like myself in categories of where evil is going to be looking at us 24-7. Am I way too theatrical on this, or do you agree with me? No, I agree with you 100%. Um, I agree with you because Google's now even getting into education, whereby they are paying off teachers to promote their Google app, so they can follow your kids from the time he's six years old, gather all of his data, and data is a very powerful weapon if misused, uh, they, you know, even Eric Schmidt at the time, who was chairman of Google, who's now chairman of Alphabet, said they get it right up to the creepy line. Well, no, I would say they actually pass the creepy line mm. because of how much information they know. So they can use this data. They know, for example, if you want to find a 24 year old girl in Nashville, Tennessee that drives a truck goes to church on Sundays and likes whiskey, Google knows who that is. Wow. You know, I'm sitting here but and I'm listening. This list type of information can be weaponized. Yeah. It can be used. It already is being weaponized because they're suppressing speech. You know, Megan, when you look at this situation with Google and the power, the absolute power that they have, I have a tendency to say this simple question, how high is up? How much more before the American public, or for that matter, anybody in the world is going to say, wait a minute, this has got to stop. I have no more privacy. I have no more individualism. Big Brother knows every step I take from the bathroom to the living room to the car. How much are they going to take before they say enough is enough well i think many people already are but when you have a search engine that runs 98 percent of searches that's automatically gathering data when you have a when you have google that owns youtube when you have google that owns um the advertising you know where you click on an ad on the website google owns that too that's why this monopoly is so powerful and can be dangerous when you have this monopoly that is partnering with politicians, when you have this monopoly that's partnering with media, when you have this monopoly that's partnering with the Department of Defense, this starts to become extraordinarily worrisome, and it is up to the FCC. This is a perfect monopoly yeah. that should be broken up. Uh, because they wield way too much power. This is why antitrust laws were set up. This is what the FCC does. And so it will come through public pressure of having the FCC reopen the investigation into Google. And the FCC at the time under Barack Obama was ready to press charges, much like the EU did. If you recall, the EU mm -hmm. slapped a huge fine on them. Uh, and so the FCC could do that again. They have all the information from the previous investigation, and they could use that in order to open an antitrust case against Google. 
You know, the topic we're talking about, ladies and gentlemen, about Google removing don't be evil clause from the code of conduct. And Megan, this morning, early this morning, I listened to uh, Dennis Prager on TV. He was being interviewed and he said something, and I'm going to have to paraphrase it because I don't have the direct quote, but he said something like, the left has a problem with evil, they accept it. And basically, that's 100% true, isn't it? I'm sorry, who said that? I didn't catch that part. Dennis Prager said that early this morning oh. on television. Yeah, well, they don't seem to, do they? Um, and I, I can't disagree with him either, because what we're witnessing as far as the weaponization of government is evil. Uh, it is tyrannical. It is the reason, this is what despot dictators do and, you know, t- in uh, countries around the world, right. they spy on their political uh, enemies. They send in the government after their political enemies. Uh, they censor free speech. Uh, and the Democrats seem to say, oh, well, this is just the new normal. Or they pretend like it doesn't exist. Or they say, oh, that's been debunked, even though an investigation hasn't even been completed or even opened. <laughs> We have a caller with a question. For, we have a caller with a question for you, Megan. If you would please call her. Go ahead, please, with your quick question. Thank you. You know the thing about today and the society and the, and the the information that's available, and and you have to, you know, my dad, and mom used to say, "You're old enough to know better." Well, see, anymore you wonder, you know, if people will ever know better and they 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 are you know being in flexed with evil from the from you know from the internet from social media from you know like google like you say and you see until they decide to actually learn what it is that's happening to them will they you know will they take the time to actually do something about it or are they you know, like Karl Marx said, are they just useful idiots? I mean, it seems like useful idiots are getting more and more, and they're dumber than they've ever been. I'll hang up. Uh, respond to the caller, please, Megan. Well, yeah, and you know, um, F- Dr. Epstein, who is out of a behavioral school um, in uh, Canada, did a study on how people can be manipulated and they don't even know it, specifically with Google search whereby Google search, if you're looking, like I said, for Barack Obama and you're undecided, you've got a 50-50 split, you uh, do a Google search, he, in his study it flipped undecided to 80-20. Uh, and the people didn't even really know they had been imp- manipulated, and that's how powerful this search is. And so I, I tend to, I, you know me, I fight fire with fire. So if this is the new rule, if we can spy on political campaigns we can use the FBI against our political enemies. We can use the CIA and the NSA against political enemies. Well, let me take my earrings off and roll up my sleeves. Because why not? Why can't we? Why can't? If the Democrats are defending what they're doing right now and what Barack Obama did with the weaponized agencies and his administration, by unmasking 200 individuals, by planting moles within a political campaign, by using the IRS against his political enemies, by using the DOJ against his political enemies, who doesn't think you that? How about we plant some moles in Elizabeth Warren's campaign? Right. How about we plant some moles in Gil Garcetti's campaign or the governor of California, whoever's running for that, Gavin Newsom? Uh, how about we plant some moles in uh, any Democrat campaign, like Tester, maybe up in Montana? Because if these are the new rules, well, then we'll play by their rules. Absolutely. And we'll see how they like it. And then you listen to the interviews of Mr. Potato Head, better known as James Clapper, and coming out and basically admitting that they spied on the Trump administration, but but it was for the country good. That makes it all okay. How would you respond to that? Why didn't they announce it? Why didn't they, if they were doing something on behalf of President Trump in order to protect President Trump, why didn't they pull one person aside, including the candidate Trump at that time, and say, you know what, we're monitoring your campaign because we believe, and you should know this, we believe that you are being penetrated by Russian agents and they are trying to steal this election. They never did it. Why wouldn't they do it? Absolutely. 
So we're so worried about our fabric of democracy being penetrated by the Russians, specifically in the Trump campaign. Why wouldn't they protect Donald Trump by telling him that? This was all done. This was all done for one purpose and one purpose only. And it was called, and it is called, sedition. And that's the word that I want everyone to start using. Because when you look up sedition in the dictionary, it's, the Google can't manipulate the definition. What they did between all of the agencies of government was a seditious conspiracy. And they tried to stop the will of the people in the election, and then they tried to overthrow the will of the people when this administration was seated. Absolutely. Megan, we, we all of a sudden we had the, the voice quality on your phone uh, go down. If you could hold it a little bit more still or something, it happened. Uh, we faded out a little bit. One final thought before I let you go this morning. I want you to comment on the left and how they are hypocrites about their views and their attitudes. And uh, one of the NBC reporters, Nicole Wallace, regarding Sarah Sa- Huckabee Sanders saying she would like to wring her name neck. Talk about that quickly. Well, we've seen, uh, obviously, an increase in violent rhetoric against Sarah Sanders as well as Donald Trump. I mean, we just had a a pundit, uh, forgive me, I can't remember his name right now, on uh, CNN with Chris Cuomo, Lawrence Tribe. Lawrence Tribe. Um, He's more than a pundit. Uh, He said, if you're going to shoot uh, Donald Trump, meaning with impeachment, you've got to shoot to kill. Uh, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, uh, Nicole Wallace, a, a quote-unquote journalist, uh, wants to wring her neck because she didn't answer the question according to what Nicole Wallace thought she should answer. you got April Ryan, member of the press corps, wants to take Sarah Sanders out to the street and beat her up uh, because Sarah Sanders simply said, well, you don't know me that well. Uh, that was a cause for a fight. And if you recall, when Steve Scalise was really assassinated, along with a dozen Republicans in Virginia on a baseball field by a crazed Democrat, uh, at that time, uh, Nancy Pelosi and the other hacks of the Democrat Party came out and said, well, we all need to tone down the rhetoric. Mm-hmm. You know, we're, we're guilty of both sides. We really need to tone down the violent rhetoric. Well, that lasted about a month, and then they went back to calling us Nazis. Uh, and now we see this increase in rhetoric specifically with their anger against this administration because he's destroying their power, uh, their monolithic power that they had for eight years. Um using the federal agencies as weapons against conservatives and Republicans. So now they're back to the same old violent rhetoric, and they're levying it at the president, uh, much like I'm glad you brought up John uh, James Clapper and John Brennan. John Brennan is tweeting threats to the president, to Mitch McConnell, to, to uh, Paul Ryan. And uh, until we start putting people in jail and indicting people, uh, this is going to continue. Absolutely. Megan, you are always appreciated on this program. Megan Barth, of course, the co-chair of the Media Equality Project and national spokeswoman of MediaEqualizer.com. I really enjoy her being forthright and honest with us on this program. Megan, God bless. Come back soon. Anytime, Zeb. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Straight Shooter, I enjoy having her on the program, and believe me, we're going to hear more of her in the future right here on Zeb at the Ranch. I want to remind you, too, again about Redder Showcase. Yes, sir, re great big Memorial Day sale today. Tomorrow, Friday, Saturday, and special hours on Monday, Memorial Day from 10 to 4. Six months, same as cash on approved credit. Don't forget, stop in, check out all the great buys on Maytag, Whirlpool, Amana, KitchenAid, Speed Queen, all of this. And the great big mattress gallery with Serta, Tempur-Pedic, and other brands. Woo! Save money. Enjoy. A great big Memorial Day sale at Redder Showcase, 2611 Overland in Burley. And uh, coming up in a few moments, we are going to have my dear friend Frosty Woldridge with part three of his absolutely uh, very informative and educational uh, series on illegal aliens in this country and refugees and the numbers, and this country is at 
the limit. We're going to talk about that in just a little bit. Um, Also, I would like to remind everyone about our friends with Lennox Home Comfort Systems. Airvana is described and defined as the ultimate level of comfort you'll achieve with the presence of a new Lennox Home Comfort System. When you buy a new Lennox system at Ramsey Heating and Electric, you can get up to $1,700 in rebates. Airvana is just another way to make you feel better at home, so Call Ramsey Heating and Electric at 678-0459 or go to the website ramseysonline.com. Wheels, if you would, we'll take this break and I'll be back with Frosty Woldridge in just a few minutes. And now back to Zeb at the Ranch on AM 1230 KBAR. To reach Zeb, call 436-2244 or toll free 1-866-927-4587. And now, here is Zeb Bell. Thank you very much and welcome back to our last half hour of the program this morning. On Monday, we started a four-part series uh, with Frosty Woldridge in Golden, Colorado. This man has the facts, this man has the figures, and this man has the knowledge of what is happening in America and what will happen in the future with uh, all the numbers of illegal aliens and refugees coming into this United States and how the American public, the American taxpayer, is going to have to foot the bill. Good morning, Frosty Woldridge. How are you? Good morning, Zeb. I'm, I'm excited. Uh, I actually... Uh... Your program is getting broadcast all over the nation and beyond, and I'm getting emails and phone calls, and what can I do? We're going to cover part three today of the perfect storm uh, gathering over America, and then, of course, tomorrow uh, I'm going to give you solutions on what you can do. So uh, I'm just I'm ready to rock and roll. Uh, I'm, I'm really thrilled that you're getting such extraordinary uh, spread, uh, and you're reaching so many people. Uh, And one thing I want to make this clear to every person listening this morning for part three. Uh, One of the questions was, well, Frosty Woldridge is a fear monger. Uh, He's he's really bringing all this information, and it's fearful. Mm. I want everyone to understand this. Facts do not equate to fear. That's right. I am bringing you the facts. Everything I've said on this program and everything I've said in this speech that I give around the country is based on facts. And you either deal with facts or you deny them. If you deny them, they will not deny you. At some point, the facts will come to fruition. Am I making myself clear here? Because I don't want anybody to start throwing names and fearmonger, racist, nativist, uh, xenophobe, and all that. These are facts, and either we deal with them, or every race, every color, every creed, every religion, every everything in this country is going to be dealing with another hundred million immigrants in our country uh, within the next 30 years. By calling... The fact... Uh, I was going to say, by calling you a fear monger and calling us bigots and everything else, that's just really a very unintelligent way of avoiding a conversation about facts and figures and the truth. And to those people that say that kind of thing or intimate that kind of thing, they had better crawl back underneath the rock with which they reside. That's correct. So here goes part three, and I hope it makes impact. And I think one of the things that most people didn't even begin to understand or appreciate that is that the fact that if this thing continues and we allow mass immigration into this country and the 1965 Immigration Reform Act is not stopped or rescinded, Idaho will be uh, harboring, uh, featuring 10 million more people in the state of Idaho within wow. the next 30 years, if not more. Wow. Uh, that seemed to really shock a lot of people, uh, because what this, uh, again, as I've said, exponential growth is like the growth of a cancer cell. And if you keep allowing a cancer to keep growing within the body, it will ultimately kill the host body. If we keep allowing immigration into our country, it's not going to only kill the United States of America. It's going to, it's going to collapse our civil, it's literally going to collapse our systems, our welfare systems, our medical systems, our educational systems. And that is the fact. It's not just hearsay. It's a fact. So here is part three. Since 1970, we jumped 100 million more people and we remain on track to add 138 million more 
on our way to 625 million people in this country by the end of the century. All brought to you by Congress, your elected uh, senators and certainly your House members. And so what does that equate to? Listen carefully. That equates to 100 million immigrants from 196 different countries, which then equates to 196 different world views, 196 different cultures, 196 different religions, and 196 different languages. And what that means is all of those languages and all of those religions and all of those ethos, if you will, are, and the world views are going to literally crack America apart because no one's thinking like an American anymore. They're all pulling in their own directions. And the one fact is, and you've seen it all over the world, cultures try to dominate. You're seeing Europe right now going through the scourge of uh, Muslims and Islam. You're now seeing it over here in the United States in places like Minneapolis, Minnesota, like Dearborn, Michigan, like New York City, like Miami, like Fremont, California, Garland, Texas. They're already putting in Sharia law. So you're, you're going to see more of this if we don't stop it. And instead of pulling in one direction, all of these cultures and all of these languages and all of these world views will be pulling in opposite directions for their own cultures. Foremost among them will be the Muslims. Omar Ahmad, director of the Council of American Islamic Relations, said, and I'm quoting, Islam isn't in America to be equal to any faith, but to be dominant. The Quran should be the highest authority in America, and Islam the only accepted religion on earth. Now, you now know, uh, of course, in Minneapolis, Minnesota, there's a Muslim in the House of Representatives named Keith Ellison. He is a part of the Muslim Brotherhood. He is pushing for open borders and unlimited Muslim immigration into this country. Check it out in everything that he does. He even wears T-shirts, open borders. Now, if you look at Europe right now, we face the same growing terrorism. The more Muslims we import, the more terrorist events. It's the nature of the religion. It's not going to change because as their numbers grow, there, there is not, no way to soften their prime directive. And that prime directive is convert or kill all non-believers. If you look at Europe right now, uh, the journalist Daniel Greenfield said, and I'm quoting, when you turn on the evening news and see the running death toll, it's happening more and more often. The new brand of Islamic terror only needs one thing, Muslims. Lone wolf terrorism operates off the existing Muslim population in a particular country. The bigger the Muslim population, the bigger the risk. The, the FBI and other law enforcement agencies cannot monitor even a fraction of the Islamic uh, settler population sympathetic to terror. And so you're going to see more of this happen to our country, and we're going to see more terror events and somebody is going to become a victim of those because that is the nature of Islam. It literally creates in any country a no-man's land, and, of course, we get to be the victims of it. You know, Frosty, let me yeah. jump in here, if I may, just for a quick remark. Yeah. You know, you talk about uh, the different cultures, and you talk about the masses coming in that do not assimilate and do not have the same goals and the same thoughts about the American ideal and our history and our heritage. And once you've lost that, once you've lost our culture and lost our heritage, this is a country of nothing more than fragmented societies. That's correct. Uh, and, of course, uh, Thomas Chittam wrote the book, uh, Civil War II, The Coming Breakup of America. I've read it, and I've also, uh, I have also interviewed him. And I'll tell you what, his book is spot on. Just like my book, Immigration's Unarmed Invasion, Deadly Consequences, the same thing is happening. Now, Governor Lamb, 15 years ago, uh, did, gave a speech in Washington, D.C., which I was in the front row and heard. He was the governor of Colorado, and he said, in the eight ways to destroy... A, America, his sixth plan, and I'm quoting, for my sixth plan for America's downfall would be to include dual citizenship and promote divided loyalties. I would celebrate, celebrate diversity over unity. I would stress differences rather than similarities. Diverse people worldwide are mostly engaged in hating each other 
risk, that is, when they are not killing each other. A diverse and peaceful or stable society is against most historical precedent. precedent. People undervalue the unity it takes to keep a nation together. Uh, and you've seen this in Lebanon, you're seeing it in Sweden, you're seeing it in Norway. I can't say this strongly enough. These cultures, especially violent cultures, do not mix. Notice in just the last year, the Muslims are pushing for Sharia law in all these different cities, and they're even practicing it. We now have an average of 25 honor killings in this country, as reported uh, at a White House press conference on, uh, on February the 2nd uh, by uh, DHS Assistant District Attorney Ed O'Callaghan. I saw that particular uh, press conference, and then you have, uh, have 500,000 cases of uh, female genital mutilation in the United States right now, all by Muslims uh, to their little girls. And this is a horrible, 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 barbaric, sixth century kind of operation. Uh, you also have Black Lives Matter. And what do they sing? Death to cops. Uh, you also have, uh, formerly, the Jackson, Mississippi mayor wanted to create five southern states as the new Africa for blacks. So you see, these things are happening Mexicans want the La Raza, and the Raza, La Raza means race, and they want to take back the four border states. Now, here is a quote that's so important. The former ICE Associate General Counsel for you, James Walsh, said, and I quote, Immigrants devoted to their own cultures and religions are not influenced by the secular, politically correct facade that dominates academia, news media, entertainment, education, religious, and political thinking today. Those immigrants claim the right not to assimilate, and the day is coming when they question. The question will be how can the United States regulate the defiantly unassimilated cultures, religion, and mores of foreign lands? Such immigrants say their traditions trump the U.S. legal system. Balkanization of the United States has begun. And he said that back in 1991. Mm -hmm. And as I said, we now have female genital mutilation. We have arranged marriages. We have honor killings. We've got beheadings in the United States. We've got behandings. I've got the reports on that. We've got fathers shooting or strangling their daughters for wearing jeans. We have, uh, we have the regular terrorist events like the Boston Marathon, Ohio State, Garland, Texas, more Oklahoma with a beheading there. You've got Orlando, Fort Hood, San Bernardino, St. Cloud. You've got New York City and more to come. Now, you also have 800 languages in New York City. Here in Colorado, we have 173 different languages in our public schools, which means we're not getting anything learned because we have to degrade our educational system to fit all of these people who can't even speak English, and we can't even begin to teach. There's over 100 languages in Southern California. Uh, this is the kind of thing that creates what I have found in my world travels. The, the, the biggest thing that causes third world countries, does anybody out there know what it is? It's illiteracy. And right now, the United States, uh, in America, here in Detroit, Michigan, 78% uh, dropout flunkout rate in the high schools, 50 to 60% dropout flunkout rate in Chicago, 67% dropout flunkout rate in public, Denver public schools just a few years ago. And most big cities, with all these immigrants and all of these people are uh, conglomerating, at least 50 to 60%. And notice we have 48 million people on food stamps. So... What you're seeing is, is that as we continue to flood ourselves with all these people that do not have the educational abilities, they don't have the intellectual horsepower, illiteracy will come to dominate, and then the welfare rolls will continue to explode. And you and I are paying for all of the anchor babies. As I said, we're paying for all of these uh, chain-migrated people, uh, certainly the diversity visas. And it's costing us hundreds of billions of dollars every year. Now, here's another statement by the great social scientist Garrett Hardin. He said, and I'm quoting, diversity within a nation destroys the unity and leads to civil wars. Immigration, a benefit during the youth of a nation, acts as a disease in its mature state. Too much internal diversity in large nations has led to violence and disintegration. We are now in the process of destabilizing the United States of America. The magic words of destabilizers are diversity and multiculturalism. Well, now you have an understanding of what happens when you mix all of these races and these cultures and these languages and these ethos. 
They simply clash with each other, and that's happening. Now, does anyone think that someone from Somalia or Sudan or Congo or Ethiopia or Afghanistan can think or act or become educated like an American? Does anybody in that audience, this audience this morning, do any of you think a Somalian has anything uh, in common with you? And, of course, the answer is nothing in common and mostly everything antagonistic. And here's another one. How about Black Lives Matter chanting, and I heard this myself. We want dead cops. When? Now. What's better than 10 dead cops? Answer, 11 dead cops. They were singing that in their marches across America in the past year. In London, Muslims march and chant, U.K. cops go to hell. Sharia law will save the U.K. If you look at Sweden and UK, U.K. and the Norway and Denmark and Finland and Holland and Germany and Italy and Spain, you see where we're headed. Frosty, so we have a... In this part three. Yes, go ahead. I was going to say we have a caller waiting on the line with a quick question. Very quick question. Caller, go ahead quickly. You're on the air. Well, I just reiterate, you know, there's an underground economy down in Southern California to the tune yep. of 3 million people. They don't have driver's licenses. They don't have insurance, but they drive cars. They are allowed to break the rules, and, no, and there are no go zones. The cops don't even try to go in and do it. And it's that way all over in Europe, in Detroit, like Mar in Baltimore, all across this nation. There are no go zones for the cops, and they don't go in there because they don't stand a chance of, 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 of enforcing any law. I'll hang up. Uh, go ahead, Frosty. Respond to the caller quickly. The caller is exactly correct. There are no go zones here in the United States right now. You don't see any European Americans, regular American citizens, going into uh, the no go zones there in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Certainly not in uh, Dearborn, Michigan. Certainly not down there in Miami. And it's really scary in New York City. So now let's talk about the fact that we're about to add this 138 million more people. How do you feed? water, house, warm, educate, work, another 138 million more people from all over the world, 100 million and then plus 38 million of our own. And the answer is we already have seven states that have water shortages that they're facing. Florida starting off, Georgia next, and it goes right across to California. And then I want everybody to understand this one, ecological footprint. Okay, the ecological footprint means that a person has to have so much land to live on. Well, an ecological footprint for an Ethiopian is 0.4 acres, 0.4, four-tenths of an acre. But when that Ethiopian or any African comes to America, that all then turns to 25.4 acres must be destroyed to uh, help that uh, person survive here in the United States. But if you add 100 million more people from all these countries times 25.4, excuse me, 25.4 acres, you have now got to destroy 2.54 billion acres, B as in boy, billion acres of land. That is an extraordinary destruction of our, our, our wilderness in this country. If you would get a hold of that, start thinking about the, um, the ecological footprint, the water footprint, the energy footprint, the pollution footprint, the chemical footprint. And as my book describes clearly, you know, America on the Brink, the next out of 100 million Americans, we can't, we're not going to survive this. That is what's going to be coming, and we'll be absolutely driven down to a third world country, everybody just scraping to get themselves food and water and whatever. So then you've got arable land, you've got, you've got poisoned soils, you've got all of these consequences coming at us. And... Norman Borlaug, the man who created the Green Revolution in 1970 when he was receiving the Nobel Peace Prize, said, and I quote, The Green Revolution won a temporary success in man's war against hunger and deprivation. It has given a humanity a breathing space. If fully implemented, the revolution can provide sufficient food for sustenance during the next three decades. But the power, the power, the frightening power of human reproduction also must be curbed. Otherwise, the Green Revolution... Uh, will only be ephemeral. And as you know now, uh, 4 million children starve to death every year and 8 million adults, that's 12 million people. So Borlaug was right on the money, and we're way past nine, you know, 2,000, just 30 years past what he said. Let me jump in, and we've got another... The final quote that I think is important for you, the listener, the American citizen. 
Any culture that will not defend itself against displacement through mass immigration faces extinction. That includes both time-tested and successful cultures. Embracing diversity equates to cultural suicide. America's multicultural past guarantees its destruction via cultural clashes and conflict with Islam, Mexican, and African cultures that diametrically oppose American culture. The more diverse a country, the more destructive and broken down its future. The more people, the more it destroys its quality of life and standard of living. The more it adds immigrants, the more destruction to its environment. The more it imports refugees, the faster America, Canada, Europe, and Australia lose their own ability to function and ultimately their national identities. Exponential growth of any civilization leads to collapse. That is a fact. You see it in Africa, India, and China today. You will see it in Europe, Canada, Australia, and America in the coming years if Western countries don't stop all immigration and all forms of immigration, unquote. Uh, Frosty, let me jump in. We've got, we've got to have a caller come in quickly with a phone call. We're short on time. We're down to the last three and a half minutes. Call her real fast for Frosty. Short question. Frosty, you're dead on, Zeb, all morning. This simple philosophy that I was raised by is a statement I'm going to make, and it's really simple. If you're going to play, you're going to pay. And that, and that, and and we're allowing people to get by without paying in this world today, and that's all I got to say. I appreciate I that. Pay. I appreciate it, Earl. Go ahead, uh, Frosty, respond to the caller quickly. Well, the caller is right on the money. Uh, when you think of 48 million people on food stamps, you've, you've got uh, $296 billion a year across 15 federal agencies paying for all of these immigrants, both legal and illegal. That means they're all taking a free ride and they could care less. And that is the reality that we're facing. And as the one caller said, the underground economy in, 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 in California is breaking that uh, entire uh, country, uh, state. And it will, in the end, just be absolute chaos. Frosty, let me... We're going to go over what you can do tomorrow, but here are the solutions to what we're facing. We need to rescind the 1965 Immigration Reform Act and shut down all immigration into the United States of America. Number two, we need to engage the McCarran-Walters Act of 1952 to stop all Muslim immigration because it is a religious, economic, political system bent on overthrowing the United States Constitution. That is a fact, and therefore any Muslim in this country is absolutely should be deported because they are here to overthrow the United States of America. It's in their charter, it's in the Koran, and that's what they've said, as I've just uh, reported. Number three, mandate English as the only spoken and written language in America for all communications in education, government, and mercantile outlets. Number four, we need a national conference in America to make a plan on what path we want to pursue for the greater good of our children. In other words, what kind of a civilization do we want to give to them? Number five, create a national international discussion debate on population stabilization in the United States and around the world. We have got to start saying what we're... You never go anywhere in a car on a long trip without a plan. You don't go there without a map. You don't go there without preparation. Well, we are blindly racing into the future right now with no plan, no understanding what's happening, and we're literally going to pay a price that's going to be absolutely severe to everyone. And I repeat this, no American of any race, creed, or color is going to escape what's coming once we add another 140 million more people, and 100 million of them will be immigrants. Zeb, have I made myself really clear about this, because I want everyone to understand, every one of you, Every one of your children will be adversely affected by this massive population load coming down on America. Absolutely well done on your presentation. And really, I've got to wrap it up for today, but I'm going to say this. The numbers are there. The truth is there. The facts are there. And for those that would arbitrate against the facts for their own agenda, all they need to do is sit down and put a mirror in front of their face and say, am I being honest? They are not. They need to look at the facts and figures and understand what's happening. Frosty, very well done. Tomorrow's part four of more of what we're talking about since Monday. Frosty Woldridge, Golden, Colorado, thank you so much for being on the program this morning. Thank you, Zev. God bless. Me. God bless. Man, I'll tell you what, he hits it right on the nose about what is happening, and unfortunately, we're too blind to see, and we're not listening. 
Time for the weather quickly by Scarrow's Meats, 331 North Road, Jerome. The number to call, 324-7657, or you can go to their website, scarrowsmeats.com. All the delicious meats, the prime ribs and the smoked hams and the bacons, the different kinds of bacons, the breakfast sausages, the bratwurst, I mean, the list goes on and on. They are there to serve you with the most delicious meats at Scarrow's Meats. Right now, here's Gina with the weather. Here's your weather forecast as we hit midweek stride. And for the morning hours, we're going to see some sunshine. But as we move through the day and into the afternoon, maybe some storms. Here's your weather forecast for Zebit the Ranch. Partly sunny skies as we begin the day. But as we move through the afternoon, some storms are going to be rolling in that could produce small hail, gusty winds, and heavy rain. Mostly cloudy skies by this afternoon as well with the high of 71. That could continue for tonight with a low of 51. Tomorrow, 20% chance of showers and thunderstorms in the afternoon. Mostly sunny skies. We are expecting a high close to 80 for tomorrow night. 20% chance of showers and thunderstorms with a low of 52 for Friday. Sunny, about mid 80s. 83 is what we're expecting. And then for Saturday, 20% chance of showers and thunderstorms. Mostly sunny skies and a high of 76. That's your weather forecast. Thank you, Gina. Brought to everybody by Scarrow's Meats. Don, Scarrow, and the rest of the crew. Serving you at 331 North Road, Jerome. Again, that telephone number, 324-7657. They are changing the way we eat one delicious bite at a time. Thank you, Scarrow's Meats. Our major sponsor, we've uh, got so many things to be thankful for, and they, the Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, provide a great service to you. That that's right. They have a free pre-trip safety check. They provide uh, tires. They check your air pressure. They check the brake components. Check the wheel alignment for tire wear, front end components, shocks and struts, batteries. They want to make sure that if you're heading for a road trip, you can go safely and get back home safely. And don't forget they've got all the best of tires and the different tread designs for your road trip. Like for your car, the Ultra Z900. Oh, that is a dandy passenger car tire. You check it out today. Stop in and see any one of the seven locations of your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family in Paul, Daniel on Pole Line in Twin Falls, and Randy on Overland in Burley. The best, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. All right, I thank everybody for their phone calls today, and we certainly appreciate it. Once again, tomorrow at 10.30, Frosty will be on for part four of his series this week. Don't miss that. I want to remind you, tomorrow morning at 8.06, ride the horse for three hours, and, of course, right here on KBAR, 12.30 a.m., and then streaming live on the Internet, zebbell.com. The way things were are the way things ought to be. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great day.